Today we are learning new details about the woman accused of killing her father and six-year-old daughter. Jessie was diagnosed with bipolar disorder when she was eight years old. The mother, Cheyenne Jessie, reported the two missing to deputies yesterday morning. She said maybe they were in Georgia. Turns out they weren't in Georgia. They were just about a half mile down the road at the landlord's house. This video contains the interrogation of a woman who murdered her father and daughter so her boyfriend wouldn't leave her. In the summer of 2015, the relationship Cheyenne Jesse had with her boyfriend, Cody Monroe, was slowly falling apart. Jesse's daughter, Meredith, from a previous relationship, had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder and schizophrenia, and neither adult knew how to handle the situation. Monroe gave Jesse an ultimatum, fix it or he was out. Jesse was desperate. She felt as if this was the first good relationship she had ever experienced, and she was determined not to lose it. She took her daughter to the home of her father, Mark Weekly. There, she shot and stabbed both before putting their bodies in totes and storage tubs. She moved them to a storage shed belonging to a neighbor who was traveling. Jessie had the only key and knew she had time to try to cover her actions. Jessie spent two weeks cleaning the house before reporting her father and daughter missing. Less than 24 hours later, she was arrested. Cheyenne. Um, like I said before, I'm going to take a part. This is the take of you. Can you just call me back? Okay. Um, Neither one of us got to talk to you earlier, so we're going to probably ask you some questions you've already had before. But if you bear with us, we'll try to be as peaceful as we can about it, all right? Hey, Cheyenne. And I'm a. There might be a lot of questions you already asked, okay? Mm -hmm. um, but but I'm gonna start from, from the beginning. About how is is your first name spelled? How do you spell your first name? Um, C H E I A N N E. Okay, give a middle name. Nicole. Um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna do this. N I C O L E. Is it on your ID? Yes, sir. Do you have it with you? Yes. Yeah. Is your last name? Jesse J E S S I E. Yeah, that's my old address on there. I've never had a chance to update. Yeah, next door. Oh, okay. Next door to your dad? Yes. And what's your birthday? Five. Sorry, um, I was. It's August 25th, 89. Hers is 52609. Uh, I don't think all this stuff. Okay, where's your daughter's name? Meredith Leanne Jesse. L E E A N N, one word. And um, she's six? Yes, sir. And who does she go with full time? Um, me, but my dad was talking about maybe taking her. Okay. To, and just to school starts. So, so this last time you dropped her off, he's going to, y'all are talking about him taking her until school starts? Yeah, okay. until she gets straight, because she behaves better for him. She has oppositional defiancy. Okay. Basically, where she has the word problem. Okay. She's actually said that the police can't touch her. And I said, yeah, they can. They're pretty powerful people. Have you me. called the police on her before? Um, no, I haven't called the police on her before, but I've had her big grafty. I'm oh, sorry? Big grafty. Okay, big grafty? Yeah. Okay. okay. When, that's all right. When was she, when was she big grafty? Um, the first time we went to the doctor and everything, and we talked to them, and she did it herself. No, no. When um, was that? How long was it? Um... June was the first time, and she had one done in July. Of this year? Yes, sir. So she got they granted when she went to the doctor and they determined that? Or, yeah. yeah, she said that I've seen this before and we don't get a handle on it now, and it, that it can be seen some pretty worse scenarios. Okay. And 
that she goes, it's a chemical imbalance also in the brain. Is it, did, did they say that's hereditary or anything like that? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, um, with her dad having it and my mom having it, that, you know, and then my grandma has it and my, so my siblings have yeah. it. Meredith had been diagnosed with schizophrenia and bipolar disorder, but there is some question as to whether or not that diagnosis was correct. Her biological father has it? Who's your yeah. biological father? Uh, Billy Salisbury. Billy Lee Salisbury. We're still seeing the child's life? No, sir. He hasn't seen her since she was not even a year old. And I'd like him moving to Florida. Is it S-A-L-I-S-B-U-R-Y? Just like you spell Salisbury State. And how old was he? Um, I don't remember. I know it was birthday. He's like 88. Um, so he's in his 20s? Yeah. You said before he moved to Florida, where's he, where's he at? Um, he lives in Georgia somewhere. I've been trying to find him to uh, get child support. Okay. For pretty much all of the life. Okay. He handed us 50 bucks up there and said, don't call child support on me. I said, okay. Came $50? Florida. Yeah, but I came to Florida and did right. it anyways. It was like, Okay, right. you know, you help make her, you know, you should help raise her. And that's when she was three years old, y'all came out of Florida? Um, before she was a year old. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, she was a baby baby. Okay. And who's, a, does she have a psychiatrist here and a medical doctor? Yes, sir, at Peace River. Okay. Where's the medical doctor? Um, Peace River. Do you know the doctor's names? Um, it was supposed to be this lady, um, a deer. But she's not there, and then we're supposed to see this other person, and Meredith hasn't had a chance to go see that person yet. She, the medical dad, doctor? Mm -hmm. My no. dad was supposed to take her to see him. <clears throat> so I told him, I said, she's been day practice, but I don't want to see her uh, Monday morning. Mm -hmm. And he said, okay. When, when, which Monday morning? The following Monday that I dropped her off. Then what's the day you dropped her off? I dropped her off on the 18th, okay. Saturday. Very early okay. in the morning before I went to pick my fiance up and work. Okay, and so she was supposed to go to the doctor on Monday to see the medical doctor or the psychiatrist? Um, like a medical doctor and a psychologist. Like, she's supposed to get like a check of her. Uh -huh. they, they did it before. Uh, basically, it's like um, when a patient comes out of the hospital, they normally, like in three days, they follow up with them, make sure that they're still not wanting to harm themselves and everything. Okay. And I, um, and I know that some some deputies uh, were detectives. I, I wasn't out. I didn't come and you called to file a report or whatever, so this is my first time talking to you. Uh, but you talked to some detectives or deputies at, at your dad's house? Yes, okay. How did you get here? Um, did you all drive here? No, they brought me here. Oh, you were, you were with them here? Okay. Yes, did you come, come here under arrest or anything like that? Yes, did you come here because you wanted help? Or I wanted help finding my daughter okay. and my dad. Like, he texted us on my fiance's phone. My phone was kind of jacked up that week. Okay. Um, it was time for me to get minutes on my phone, and my data was slow. So, okay. but so you, you wanted to come, you came here freely, and you wanted to help? You yeah, wanted to come here? I wanted to help my dad right. and my daughter be found. Okay. Yeah, we need to. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it's, in these missing person cases, the reason why. If you're wondering, the reason why I ask all these questions is because, believe it or not, I've done this job a long time, believe it or not, I need to almost, like, know the whole, her whole life and what she does and all that kind of stuff, okay? Um, so that's why we ask all these questions. So if she was supposed to go to the, uh, the doctor on the 20th, yeah. um, do you know if she went? I know I don't. Uh, they called me and I let them know that my dad was supposed to take um, her and everything. When did they call you? Um, that day that she wasn't there. Okay. So they called after the day where parents didn't show up? Yeah. And I'm like, I call my dad and it's like, when I call him, his phone's turned off. Okay. So, and I know whenever he gets mad at me, he turns the phone off. He also told me when I dropped her off. I don't know why you're putting her on his medicine and stuff. When she's with me, she acts perfectly fine. Okay. But on the 20th, what time was the appointment? What time did they call you? Uh, I think the appointment was supposed to be like in the first thing in the morning. I don't, 
I don't remember that because my hours are at work. It was so crazy. Do, do you remember about what time the, the daughter called you and said, hey, are they coming in? Or? Um, it was like the afternoon. So afternoon time? Yes, sir. And how do they call you? Do they call you what? They call my cell phone. Okay. What is your cell phone number? Um, 863-398-5131. So right after they called you, were you at work that day when they called you? Um, I don't remember. I, I know I worked pretty to schedule like 11 to 4 sometimes. Where else do you work? Uh, Plant City Lowe's. Oh, okay. Are you like cashier or yeah. manager? cashier. Okay. I'm part-timer. Um, so when they called you on your cell phone, um, did you take the call or was it just a voicemail? Um, one of the things the detectives usually have to determine when someone is reported missing is whether or not the missing person is just avoiding contact. Naturally, when a child is involved, the search begins much more quickly. If you haven't already, take a look at my Patreon page for exclusive and ad-free content, including this interrogation video, where we dive into the twisted tale of a woman who falsely claimed a scandalous affair with Chris Watts driven by her desperate desire for fame and recognition. Witness the lengths some individuals go to for their shot at notoriety. You can watch this story and more at patreon.com slash Stranger Stories Plus. So you didn't actually talk to anybody? They were just no, the I, I'm not allowed to answer my well, That's what I was asking. So how long like, did you go on a break and try to call your dad? Mm -hmm. And, and um, how long was it after the, the doctor left the message that you called and tried calling your dad. I'm not, I'm not saying you know it was exactly an hour, five minutes, but was it like an hour later when you were able to get off the register? Or was I, it? Sometimes it's whenever <clears throat> anyone decides to, okay, uh, whatever cashier, head cashier's there, determines on, all right, well, I'll go ahead and check the schedule, see yeah. if anyone's going to be there. There's one cashier, uh, he's kind of, um, he forgets or wanted to have a break. Okay. But that, that day specifically, um, do, you, do you remember they left your message? Do you remember about how long it was until you called your dad? Um, no, sir, I don't remember. Okay. Um, and did you leave a voicemail for him? Um, no, I, I don't like leaving voicemails. Okay. I can't, I don't like his voicemail. It says, leave me a number. Okay, you ring my phone. Ring my number, got my phone, leave me a message, or leave me alone. That's what your dad's voicemail says? Yeah. How many times did you try to call him? Um, they had to call him once, and then I just, I don't remember exactly how many times I tried calling him over the past couple of days. I mean, that day, whenever the, because he was supposed to take your daughter to the, to the doctor, right? Yeah. And they're calling saying, hey, basically, they haven't shown up, or is someone bringing her to the doctor? So did you try calling your dad just once? And yeah. Just one time? And it went to voicemail? Straight voicemail? Yes. Is that odd for your dad's phone to go straight to voicemail? Um, with his master phone, sometimes it's like, he doesn't get signal, so it's okay. like turned off. It's not like it's turned off or anything. Or like, sometimes he actually forgets to charge it. Okay. So, so do I. My phone. But, um, but he's also been complaining about how Metro has been giving him so much problems. So okay. he said that he needs to let the service go. Um, last time I talked to him, like a couple weeks, my family was down. Okay. So, but you can only remember calling him once on that Monday. Yeah. Okay. Did you try to call him back any time that, on that Monday later on? Did he get off work or anything? I don't remember. Okay. I don't, I don't remember right now. I'm trying to go to sleep. Okay. Things, like, like up again. I know you're tired. You know, just, um, you know this, but I'm just going to remind you. It's, I mean, you. We can go as slow as we can because all this stuff is very important. Okay. Um, I know. When, when, you, when, you, when, you're, uh, when was the, the last time your, your baby went to the doctor before the 20th? Do you, um, you know what month it was in? In July. Um, so she got a Friday and they kept her for like a week. Um, I picked her up Friday and Saturday I took the, took her to him. And during that week, um, her it went over to the 72 hour already cold and then she became voluntarily there. And when I went up there, I was like, I voiced my concern about how I don't know if this medicine is gonna help or not because the last medicine didn't help. 
And I told him about how I was afraid of her staying at the house because she comes to the door. I actually had to lock my bedroom door because she whispers through the door. I'm very glad this door's locked. And she threatened me so many times, and I just I just don't feel safe with her. Okay. When I'm with her alone, I normally, I, I have the door shut, and I can see through the crack where she sleeps. Okay. And I normally wait until she's asleep before I go upstairs. And I... I removed all the knives and everything from downstairs, but since she's not been home for a week, I've kind of been able to bring my knives back out so I can cook and everything. Okay. Well, um, so she's hard to deal with. Yeah, it, I've never, I don't understand how to deal with the right. bipolar or child with disabilities, so I just tell my dad, well, maybe if I sign my rights away to somebody who would be able to handle her and be able to, like, see if Especially if your dad's saying that yeah. she's flying around him, I guess. Yeah. Jesse sounds as if she struggles with Meredith, especially when it comes to Meredith's mental health needs. This can lead to frustration and hopelessness, and unless there is intervention, the outcome can potentially be grim. So you voiced your concerns on Friday to the to Peace River? Yeah. Is it Peace River? Or um, no. I was at the hospital when I was picking her up. I what? voiced my concerns to them. And what, I, what hospital? Um, it was uh, the Florida Central Behavioral Hospital. Okay. What city is that? Orlando. Okay. Yeah, it's long. So they took her all the way to Orlando? Yeah, because that was the only hospital they had a room for her. And when when her she was bigger acted, was she at Peace River? Uh, the first time, yes. Okay. Well, this time when, when she went to Orlando, um, where was she? Who Baker acted her? Uh, well, she scratched her face up, and so I was like, when I, she, I came, when I was there, I told her, I said, give me a second, I'll turn TV on, let me go change into my comfortable clothes, out of my jeans, we just got done seeing my cousins, they came in town, um, I went upstairs, I came downstairs, and I go, baby, come here, and he goes, what? I said, just come here, and look what she did. You said, baby, you talking about Matthew? Yeah, my fiance. And he comes down, and he goes, what did you do? I said, I don't know what she did, and then she went all kind of just, I just, uh, the, everything doesn't revolve around me. I'm like, nothing revolves around anybody. Oh, like she wanted attention? Yeah. Okay. And then, like, I just said, I don't know what to do with this. I, I, I don't know what to do. Well, so, I mean, did you take her to the doctor that yeah. day, or? Um, we went, we called East River, and they weren't open, so we waited, and then we took her that Monday, mm-hmm. and when we went there, the lady goes, well, she seems fine now. I'm like, no, there's, there's something wrong. The medicine's not Does she not have all over? Yeah, she likes to pick at her skin. Right, and, no, but did the doctor see that? Yeah, the doctor seen her scratches, and I showed them the video. Did he didn't think nothing was wrong with it? Or her or whoever it was. Well, she's not acting like that now, is what they said. I'm like. But they went and kept what? her though. No, they didn't want. It. Like she said, if you want a big router, you gotta take her to this place here or this place here. So I just took her back to Lakeland Regional, uh-huh. where she got big router the first time, where Peter River big router there, but they sent her to there, and then they sent her to there, and they go, oh, I remember you. Like, so who who sent her to Orlando? Um, Lakeland yes. Regional. Yeah, because uh-huh. that's where. They don't hold her age group there. When is the last time that she was seen by the doctor for medical or for checkup? Not psychiatric to check up. Um, regular checkup. Um, I think it was like fourth kindergarten. I took her there. And no, I had some blood work there. And I don't remember the exact date. No, I mean, so what grade is she going to be going into? And she's supposed to be going into the first grade. Okay, so she, she before her kindergarten year? Yeah. She, didn't seem like she didn't have any problems or sicknesses or checkups or anything throughout a year? Um, they did some blood work, though, through the doctor, and they've done a EEG with her brain. They've uh, sent her to a cardiologist. Um, I found out she has had bicuspid artery valve, I think is what it's called, so we get like uh, two valves in your heart instead of three. Mm-hmm. It says nothing to be concerned with, just watch her and everything. So I kind of became like, I'm overprotective. I don't really let her go outside very much unless I'm out there. Well, when, when did she have blood work done? What was that for? Uh, they were trying to see what all she had, like what medicines would work with her, like if okay. she was sick or... And when, like, when was that before kindergarten or was that after the year? That was during the year whenever okay. they were trying... Uh, the new doctors came 
with Peace River because mm-hmm. I did take her to Grace Point and Grace Point just wanted to say, oh, she has ADHD. Mm-hmm. Well, all the ADHD medicine that they gave her wasn't working. Does she get, did she get SSI for her? Or, um, know, how will bills pay for her? Um, she has uh, insurance, yeah, mm-hmm. Medicaid. Which, which company? Um, metal, I have it in my, my wallet. It's Meta something rather. It's the, it starts with an M. I don't. Do you have your wallet with you? Yes, sir. Okay. I always try to make sure I keep all of her stuff. Yeah, that. It was this one, and then it turned to that one. So it's Magellan. Yeah. And my dad has copies of her insurance, and I wrote a note to this way he could take her to there, and I've also told him that at Peace River that he has authority to take her to appointments so that's when she can get proper help. I just want the best help for her. Right. And well, tell me tell me about um, you and your daughter's relationship. What do y'all normally do together? And, um, um, I know she has issues. Well, um, every time I go to try to tickle her, and like, you know, mamas do, mm-hmm. and try to love on her and stuff, she turns it violent towards me. She's not, she's not my glasses off or they've broken up here. Several times she's choked me. Um, she actually punched me in the stomach and I actually started spotting and I went to the doctor back in April. Mm-hmm. This was before she got big bracket. And um, this before what now? She got big bracket. Oh, okay. Like, ever got big bracket. And they said I was pregnant, but I was spotting and they didn't see the baby, but the tests were positive. So I went down to the, a clinic and I had to have an abortion because my body was trying to have a miscarriage, but... While children can be surprisingly violent during these outbursts, the story doesn't set quite right. Jesse, for various reasons, could be exaggerating or lying entirely. Who was the father of that child, Matthew? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I kind of like... How did that make you feel? Did that mess up? When I, when, when I asked that, I mean, did that have an effect on you and Matthew's relationship? Um, we kind of like, we just held each other's clothes and said, we'll work through this. He said, I'm here for you for everything. We'll help get her straight later on in life. We'll get, oh, well, maybe we'll have another one. It depends on were, how... Were y'all planning to have a child? Oh, not really at this okay. time in our relationship, because it's early. How long have y'all been together? Um, about a year now. Did you live with him? Mm-hmm. How long have you lived with him? Uh, since November. I just... So 2014? Yes, sir. And before that, were you living with your father? No, or the house I assume. I was living in that house. That, your father's house? Yeah, it's my house. He was supposed to uh, just help me out with everything, and he says that uh, well, let me ask you this. Could you, the address is on your license, 5205 Drain Hill Road. How far is that from your dad's house? That's my next door. That's where we were living when we first uh, moved to Lakeland. You and your dad? Yes. When I just haven't first... changed it to the... Um... I understand. I don't know where about that, but when did you first move to Lakeland? Um, let's see. We came down here before when I was a year old. We stayed at, uh, in um, March, and then... So like and September, we moved to Lakeland. Yeah. Okay. Then, and we waited. We lived there for about three years. At 5205? Mm-hmm. And then you moved to? The house. Okay. So you were there at, you were there at the, your guys' current house for maybe a year or so before you moved to, um, with your boyfriend? Um, not even, almost a year. Right. Okay. And then, so and then you've been living with your boyfriend for a year, so that makes yeah. about five. And years she ago. got, she about got kicked out of a school too. Okay. Um, she went to. Um, in, in in Polk County. Um, no, she went to um, the school right there in Hillsborough County. It's a charter school, okay. Advantage Academy. Uh, she started having all kinds of behavioral problems. A lot of her behavioral problems started at when she was in BBK, when she was at A Plus Learning Center. Okay. And I've always wondered, did something happen there or anything? And now maybe she blames me because, you know, mom was supposed to protect me. Mom wasn't there. How old was she when she was there? Um, she started going there when she was about a year old. Which is when I started getting cash assistance. And I was on uh, um, food stamps. I'm still on food stamps. but Is Matthew on food stamps as well? Um, no. Um, I just haven't updated my food stamps yet. How how would you classify <clears throat> on a scale of one to ten? 
Um, Ted being the best, how was you and Matthew's relationship? Um, I'd say it's about a, a ten. Really? So y'all yeah. plan on getting married and all that? That's yeah, good. Good we just want to just get my daughter help first, and you know, put some years in between knowing each other's instead of like rushing right. into marriage like everybody else does in our age. We, you know, we're comfortable with each other's. I feel safe. I felt safer when I'm with him than I do when my daughter's there with me alone. And I try to make sure that I'm not alone with her because of her mentality. Okay. So on a scale, I know that your daughter has issues, but on a scale of 1 to 10, how would you classify your, you and your daughter's relationship, 10 being the best? Um, <clears throat> I was trying to make it at least an 8, but she... But realistically, about, about five. Five. Because okay. every time I go to hug her, she turns the violence towards me, and I'm like, okay. But when I come home from work and I'm tired, I say, give me just a little bit. Let me calm down from work, and then we can play. I we I try to used to take her out to do stuff when I had the money. Um, we used to go see movies sometimes or go to a park. But then she started becoming a little weird when it comes to strangers. Like, she went up to a stranger and shaved him and told her her whole, whatever she knew. If she knew her address, she probably would have told him that. What was that? Um, happened? That happened at Lowe's when his parents took her with him. So Lowe's while that worked. Oh, okay. And he was a Jesse is asked to rate her relationships with her boyfriend and daughter. Of course, everyone wants their relationship to be a 10. But that is rarely the case. And it is something that can fluctuate. It is troubling that Jessie puts the blame for the negative relationship on her daughter, especially since the revulsion for touch is often a symptom of various disorders and is not the child's fault. So his parents know your child too? Yes. Okay. And how would you classify Matthew's relationship with her daughter on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the best? Um, he was trying to make it like a 10, but... Of course, he always wanted everything to be a 10. But. Yeah, but... He goes, I don't know how to deal with her. I've never really had a kid. Right. And he goes, so that makes so it I'll basically he doesn't want he doesn't he's never alone with her. He goes, I don't want to be alone with her. But matter of fact, she's a little girl. There's people who right. accuse me of all different things. I'd rather just be safe. And he takes her with his family. And as long as she's buying him things. Uh, she's happy and she loves him, but mm -hmm. when he says, well, I can't buy it, we have to pay bills, then she hates him. Mm -hmm. And then she tells him that all the things he's good for is money, and I said, no, he's trying to be a dad to you, because your dad um, is with his other family right now. That's what I tell her, so that's why she doesn't feel like, well, my dad abandoned me. So do you think it's, do you think it's better off for your child, um, you said you, you was, he was going to be staying with your dad, or she was going to be staying with your father until maybe school starts. Um, were you gonna, do you think it was better off um, your daughter staying with him full time for you and your relationship? Do you think that's fair to say? Um, for my and her relationship, we seem to be like almost at a nine. Who was? Me and my daughter. Okay. When? When she's with my dad. Okay. Because like my dad kind of, he can Grandpa came and some money, so and then mm -hmm. he has some money stashed up, so he can buy her what she wants when she yeah, wants, right. <laughs> and he she listens to his theory. She thinks all adults are stupid, but Grandpa. Okay. Did she tell you that? Yeah, she actually mm -hmm. told me. I'm so stupid. do you think that having said that, do you think it's better for you and your relationship with Matthew if she's with your dad full time? Um, well, we've actually been able to focus on our relationship instead of. I'll constantly work looking over her shoulder of what she's going to do next, what she's going to destroy. Right. Um, so it doesn't make y'all's relationship better? Yeah. Okay. We're not in a lot of stress. Does it make you feel better if she's with your dad because she's better off, I guess? Yeah, I can actually sleep at night. Okay. But lately I haven't been able to sleep because I've been worried sick because I ain't been able to hear from him. Okay. Um, so let's start getting into that now. I know a little background. So you, after you picked her up, <coughs> excuse me, Friday from Orlando, Exactly. Who went to pick her up? You and Matthew? Uh, just me, because he had to sleep because he has to go to work at night. Okay. Uh, and where does he work at? Um, well, 
Um, he worked at Walmart, I worked at Lowe's, and he worked my shift. Like stocking or maintenance? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you go pick her up Friday at, at, in Orlando, and yeah. then what time was it you pick her up? Um, I picked up around uh, 3 or 4. It was raining. And were you, you have a car? Yes, sir. What kind of car is it? HHR. Okay. Looks like a PT Cruiser? Okay. Yeah. What, what color is it? Black. Okay. With chrome. And then you took her straight to your dad's house on Friday? Oh, um, no. I took her home. Excuse me. Home. And uh, I took her home. We all watched her. She kind of stayed in the living room with us. When you say we all, you and Matthew? Me and Matthew uh, and his dad and his mom. Okay, does his dad and mom live in your same house? Um, they live in a trailer right here, and we live in a fifth wheel right here. Okay, so it's the same address? Like yeah, same address. Yeah. So you, guys, you and Matthew live in the fifth wheel, and then his parents live in the, in the trailer? Yes, sir. Okay. When, when you guys, when you came home on Friday, when you say, I came home, and we were all, they were, you guys were in the trailer, the, the main house? Yeah, we were in the main house. Okay. Yeah. So y'all are watching her, hanging out, watching TV, and then what, what sure. time is it now? If you picked up a three or four... Oh, you get home uh, like at five? Yeah. Okay. She was about six o'clock. His mom went and laid down. Mary fell asleep. So I'm like, okay, well, she's asleep. It's okay if I leave her here with you, George. So I take him to work. So that's why I'm not having to wake her up at all because waking her up is, I basically, I get punched a lot. Okay. Um, it's basically like I try to wake her up and I get hurt. I, so Every I time you wake up, she starts punching you? Yeah. Can't <clears> or anything and say, I don't want to get up, and I'm not going to because you're not the boss. Okay. How like, okay. does that, that make you feel? Scared. Okay. Does it make you angry? Sad? No. When talking about her feelings, about Meredith hitting her, Jesse is most likely lying. It is natural to feel a certain amount of anger or frustration when someone strikes you, and sadness when it is your own child. Jesse is trying to avoid saying anything that might make it sound as if she was tired of dealing with Meredith. Before I came home, I also went to Walmart, got her medicine, so that's why I made sure she had her medicine for the next day. Okay, so you, um, they go to sleep around six or lay down around six or so on Friday? Yeah. What about Matthew? Um, he's up, he's getting dressed for work. And you take him to work? Mm -hmm. And you buy her what at Walmart? You said you bought her something at Walmart? Yeah. I always buy her something at Walmart. I bought her like a Monster High movie and stuff. Okay. Did you take to your dad's? Uh, no, they just I, at that time I wasn't sure if I was going to take her to my dad or not, but I just wanted something for her to do. I thought you said somebody bought her medicine or something. Yeah, I bought her medicine. From Walmart? Yes. Sir. From the pharmacy? Yes, or from, sir. Okay, what medicine did you get from um, The three uh, pills <clears throat> she has up on the entertainment center that he left. Uh, one is for uh, like a Xanax or something is what he said. One's for wetting the bed and one's to like help her calm down and focus. Okay, so you went and got those refilled. You came back home. Matthew's at work, right? Um, no, I take Matthew to work. No, no, but when you took him to work, is that when you bought the medicine and stuff? No. Okay, so this is before you even got home? Yes. Okay. On the way home from the doctor? Yes, sir. Okay. So then you get home. They go lay down, you take Matthew to work, she's there with George, right? Yes, you sleep. You take Matthew to work, and then you come back. Yeah, and then take her over to the camper to, to go to bed. Okay. Um, George said to leave her there, but I, I was like, I don't know that I have to get her up in the morning. I don't really know about leaving her throughout the whole night in case she tries anything. He goes, well, I don't really sleep at all anyways. I said, okay, well, but I'm, I'm still concerned. <clears throat> okay. So you took her to the, to the trailer? Yes, what sir. time was Matt shift? Does he go by Matt or Matthew? Um, he goes by Cody at the house. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Matthew is what he uses for like paperwork. Okay, and so Cody, doctors and stuff. Cody, you take Cody to work at what time? Um, he has to be at work at 10, so about okay. like 9.30 is when we're leaving the house. Okay, so then you get back home and you have the discussion with George about he's, it's okay she stays, but you still take her to the trailer? Yeah. To the, to the fifth meeting? Yes, sir. And then what time do you get? Is this like around what time? About probably like 11 30. Okay. Or like 10 30, 11 30. Okay. I didn't really look at the time. Then, I just kind of was focused this is on. on eight, this is on Friday night? Yes, sir. Okay. And then we went to sleep. And then in the morning, I woke up, got her dressed. 
Um, I packed her bag for my dad's, and that's when cause he, she was already going to go with him that weekend. Okay. But I talked to him about, well, if I sign my rights away to somebody who can take care of her and get her the proper medication and everything, and he said, well, you're giving up your child like your mother did you. I'm like, well. You said your dad? Yeah. When did you have this conversation with him? Um, it was a couple of days before I brought her over there. And then I had the same conversation again with him. It's like I had to repeat myself with him sometimes. So, but when you, let me ask you this. When you got back to, after you dropped Cody off at Walmart, then you got back to Cody's house and George was awake because his mom laying down? Yes, sir. And where was George at? In the living room? Or yeah. Not? Okay, and where was the baby at? Um, she was sleeping on the two chairs that we had folded together to make like a little bed. So when you woke her up, she started punching you? Yeah. Okay, so and George said, saw that happen? Yeah. Okay. And he said, well, just sleep her, sleep her. So I left her for a little bit, and then I took her over there when she calmed yeah. down. I, I press her like this, and I can pick her up. I don't really, I really can't pick her up too much, and George helped me open the doors. Okay. So, go home next morning, what time do you take her to your dad's? Um, I get up about 5 to get her up. In the morning? Yeah. Okay. And I get to my dad's about around 6, 6.30-ish. Okay. Okay. And how long, how far is your house from this one? Where do you live at? Um, it's probably, uh, I'm up here, here's the 471, here's our house, here's ODC Road. So you live in North Lakeland? Yeah, and then dad's like... Right there off the county line area. So he's pretty far from there? Yeah, about 45 minutes okay. with, with red lights. So you get there, what time, about 6.30 in the morning? Yeah. And you drop him, and your dad's away when you get there? Yeah. And when you drop her off, how long do you stay there? Just for like a few minutes, and then I'm like, I have to go get him from work. And my dad's like, says something underneath his breath. I don't know, it sounded like PG Weston or something. What does that mean? I don't know. Does he not like Cody? No, he, he love he thinks that this I was finally found a man. I'm proud of you. All the weapons he had have been shitty. Okay. Um and well, he, he he he's like, We gotta have a talk here. I'm like, but I don't know what to do with her. I don't know how to help her. It's a I'm doing all I know and I'm fixing to lose my job. Why are you gonna lose your job? Because I had to call out so much to take care of okay. her. Well, so, when you when you took your dad, she's supposed to be there a week. Yeah. At least a week. Yeah. What all? How many clothes did you bring for? Does she have clothes there? Yeah, I brought her all the clothes that she had because he has a washing machine. Okay. Well, we have one up there too. And does she but, have extra clothes there too? Yeah, and okay. he bought her clothes. Okay. So, um, did you bring that new game movie you got her? Um, no, I forgot it. Okay. That's at the uh, fifth wheel or at George's house? Uh, fifth wheel. All right. What's it called again? Uh, it was Monster High. Monster Paris. High? Yeah. Okay. Is it a DVD? Yeah. All right. You got that Friday? I think it was Friday I got it. Okay. Um, I buy her all kinds of Monster High movies. Right. I buy her. Is she that has a like, Yeah. She has a whole collection of Barbie because I made sure she had every single right. one of them. So, <laughs> after you, so how long are you at your guys before you leave? Um. Maybe like probably 10 to 15 minutes or so. So you haven't picked up uh, Georgia, right? Uh, or excuse Matthew, me, Cody. No, 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 Cody. What time does he get off for? Seven. Okay. What what Walmart is he working at? Uh, the north side. So you had to take her all the way down to your dad's house and then drive all the way back. You were going to scoop Cody up and went back home? Yeah. Okay. When, you, when you got to Walmart, did you go straight to Walmart? Yes, sir. Okay. When you got to Walmart... Uh, Saturday morning was he already off work or did you have to wait for him? Um, he was in the back uh, finishing up on the machine and clocking out. Did you wait out in the parking lot or did you go inside? No, I always go inside. Okay, did you, uh, so how long were you there until, how long did you have to wait there until he got off work? Not that long, like just maybe a few seconds. Okay, I so. I didn't really pay attention to my phone. He, oh, I understand, but then when he got off work, it was around 7.30 then? Uh, around 7.00. 10. Does he get off at 7.30? No, he's off at 7. Okay, I'm sorry. So it was maybe... About 7.30 is the time we got home. Okay. And then I looked at the schedule. Um, my schedule, I never know what day I actually have to work. I thought it was the day I had to work, but it was the day after I had to work. That day right there I was off, so me and him slept all day. On Saturday? Mm -hmm. So you had to work Sunday? Yes, sir. Okay. Did you have to work Sunday? 
Yes, sir. And um, so you drop, you drop on the Saturday the 18th, you dropped her off of your dad's. When's the next time that you talked to your dad? Um, I, I called him and it showed up where I called for like 30 seconds, but like. What do you mean it showed up? On my, on my collar thing, it says 30 seconds on there, and when I didn't seem like that long, but well, he said something. He well, acted like he hung, he answered the phone, and then like. I understand, but we'll get to that. But when is the next time after the 18th that you called him? Uh, what date was it? Sunday. Sunday. What time? What time was it? Was it Sunday night? Um. It was around. Uh, I don't remember if it was around after. Yeah, it was before I went to work. I can't remember. Was it, was it daytime? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and. I drove by the house, everything looked fine. Uh, hold on, so, so you called, you tried to come on Sunday, you tried to call him. Yeah. On Sunday. And what was the purpose of calling him? I just wanted to see. To check up? Yeah. So okay. I said, hey, did you give her a medicine? Mm -hmm. I always make sure that. I call him and give, ask him if he gives her medicine and everything. Okay. And um, did you talk to him? I, like, it sounded like he went and answered something with Meredith in the background and then, like, so he, like, the phone rings, something picks up. The phone picks up. Yeah. Right? And he wasn't talking to you. It sounded like he was doing something. Yeah. Okay. What did you hear in the background? Um, I don't know what your mother sees that's wrong with you. Okay. Then, I think my dad's been back talking to me behind my back. My kid, his wife, she's probably also. Okay. So so you heard that, yeah, but it, you said, you, when did you look at your phone and saw 30 seconds? Um, not that long ago. Like yesterday, I was looking through it, trying to figure out, okay, how long did I talk to you on this day here? Because what did I, what days did you not answer his phone? And then I okay. So did you talk did you talk to him again on did you try to call him? Did you ever talk to him on Sunday after that call? No. Okay, did you talk to him on Monday? No. Uh, did you try to call him on Monday? I had Matthew try and I asked him, I was like, Can you try to call call my daddy while I go to work? Okay. Um, did you try to call him again on Monday? Um no. I didn't try myself. I just I drove by there and they weren't home and the house looked exactly like it did whenever you well, guys showed up. <clears throat> um, when did you tell him she was supposed to be at the doctor? Did you tell him it's a Saturday? Yeah. Okay. Normally a mother would be worried if she could not reach the person in charge of her child. Especially once more than a day had passed, Jessie seems more inconvenienced than truly bothered. But judging by her answers so far, it was more of a relief not to have Meredith with her. I told him, I said, this, or I'll, I'll text you if I can remember if my phone will allow me to text. Um, and we, I also, the trailer park number, if you can, if you still have it, can you, like. You texted him this stuff? No, I talked to him. Okay, um, in person, I'll say. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, let me know anything. And then all of a sudden, when I came home and on the 22nd, no, we're not to the 20th. Day. We're still on the, the 20th. Oh. So on the 20th, um, you didn't try to call. Oh no. Okay. You worked on the 20th though. Yeah. Okay. But uh, I thought you said earlier you tried to call him when that when that on the 20th whenever it's, the doctor's office calls you. Yeah, I don't remember. I, all the days run together in my head. No, well, I understand. But <laughs> do you remember? Do you remember you telling me that on the 20th you tried to call him after the yeah. doctor's? Okay. But you didn't talk, you couldn't get through to him, right? No. Did you talk to him anymore on Monday? No. Okay. Did you try to call him anymore on Monday? His phone was going to voice and I figured he was mad at me. Okay. So and, that's, just... and that's plausible, but do you remember trying to call him on Monday later on more? Um, No, sir. I'm going to ask Matthew if he can because I don't, maybe he'll answer you. No, we'll get to that. But on Monday, when you try, uh, you, you, you try to call him after the doctor's office call him, right? And yeah. straight voice now. Straight voice now. Didn't ring around. Yeah. Did you personally try to call him anymore on, on Monday? I uh, I said, okay, I'll, I guess I'll give him a day to cool off. I mean, so no, you didn't try to call no. him. All right. So when did you, 
you said something about going by there. When was that? I drove by there. What day was it? Um, 20th, and I see my dog out in the pen. November 20th is Monday, so you drove past her on Monday? You yeah. Phone? Okay. So what time did you drive past her on Monday? Um, it was after I got off work. I, I just did a drive-by. I see well, what my time, dog. What time would you, would you go off work on Monday? Um, I think it was like 4. I feel like I can't remember. I don't remember my schedule. My schedule is okay. all crazy. But you try to drive past after work on Monday. Yeah, I, I drove past. Was it daytime or nighttime you drove past? Uh, it was evening. Okay, it was so still you could see? Yeah. Okay. And Everything looked fine. No, but um, when you drove past on Monday, was when you said everything looked the same, like his, his, what kind of vehicle does he have? Um, he owns the F-350, which I have at the house, because when he texted me that he was going up north, I went and looked at the vehicle, and it had a key stuck in it and the door for him. Okay, well, and we'll get to that, but when you drove past on Monday after work, did, did his truck was there? Yeah. What kind of truck? What color is it? It's gray. Okay. Does he have any other vehicles? Um, he has two other trucks, but they're down, they don't work, and my minivan sits in the yard. What, what two other trucks do you have? Um, it's a, like an old Ranger, mm -hmm. like when they actually made Rangers. Okay. And it's gray, it just, it, it just sits there with a bunch of, uh, Okay, what other truck? In it. And then a, a Dodge, 95 okay. Dodge. What about Suburban? The Suburban? Was that there on Monday? Yeah, it was there Monday. Okay. So his truck was there and a Suburban was there. Uh, did you stop? Uh, I stopped a little bit. I looked. I'm like, okay, we're on. No, I mean, did you get out of the door? No. Okay. I um, just figured if I did, he's going to just, I didn't want my dad. But what was your purpose to drive past her on Monday then? I just see if they were home. Okay. Because you couldn't get through to him? Yeah. Okay, yeah. he's home. Maybe he's playing with her inside because they call her together and okay. they, uh. Did you try calling when you passed by there or anything? No, I just. I said, okay, well, he's calling this mad at me. So the suburban was there and his truck, his normal truck was there. And yeah. You were passing, you went home. Yeah. Okay. And then did you did you talk to him, did you try to call him on Tuesday? Um, I don't remember if I called him Tuesday or not. Did you try going out there on Tuesday? Um. Yeah, I went by there. On Tuesday? Yeah. What time was that? Uh, was before I went to work. The landlady said she didn't hear from my dad, and they said something about going out of town and everything. Okay. And Vicky. Was, Where, where's your work at in Plain City? Uh, Lowe's. It's right no, no, there. No, no, what street? Alexander or something? Um, Jim Remen. Jim Remen Parkway? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what way do you normally go to work from your house? You just jump on I-4? Um, no, I don't jump on I-4. I normally come down through his upper hills, and I hit the... Uh, here's a, a little road that comes right here, uh, 54, and then that road right here, I can't remember, it's, uh, it's, I think it's Cherry or Chansey or something, and it hits 39, and I come down that way. Is that anywhere close oh. to your dad's house? No. Okay, so on... Normally I take that route. On Tuesday before work, you obviously had to leave a lot early. Did you really late Tuesday to work? Jesse should have been alarmed when all of the vehicles were accounted for and she still could not contact her father. If she had a poor enough relationship with him that he would avoid Jesse while he was taking care of Meredith, it is unsettling that Jesse would risk not having access to her daughter. Um, I don't remember. Okay. I, I don't, my hours, I don't remember anything. But, but do you remember being late on Tuesday? I'm almost always a few okay. minutes late clocking in. But, but having said that, you kind of have to leave kind of early to go out of your way and check on your dad's house, right? Yeah, I went by there. The suburban was moved. Or, what do you mean? It was like, it was facing forward, and then it was facing reversed. Towards the road? Yeah. So when you, when you went by there Monday, it was facing towards the house, and when you went by there Tuesday, it was back towards the house? Yeah. Like facing the road? Yeah. Okay. So, and that was before work on... When did you find out something about, you said something about he was, was this before you found out about something he's going to Georgia or something? Yeah. Okay. So you still don't know about Georgia yet? No, it's like the 22nd he texted us. So Tuesday's the 21st, and you drove by there, and you didn't make contact or anything? No, I haven't, okay. I haven't seen him at all. No, I understand. So, but you didn't stop 
on the twenty first, right? I like you didn't get out and go knock on the door. No. Okay. So Wednesday, which is the twenty second. Um, I went by there the evening again. Do you still know about Georgia yet? Uh, when I come home, my they, my fiance goes, hey, baby, I'm sorry. I'm like, sorry about what? When you come home from where? From going by there? From work. Okay. When did you go by there on Wednesday, though? Um, it was Before Tuesday night. I went by there. No, no, but Wednesday, did you go by there? Your dad's house? Um, I think I did. I don't remember. Okay. And then after work, you don't matter if you went there, that's fine. But you went home after work? Yeah. On Wednesday, you work Wednesday? Yeah. And and that's when you got home and your boyfriend, that Cody said something, I'm sorry or something? Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, what? He goes, go over there, sit down, and he let me read the text message about dad having cancer. And then I see him on the phone where it was the 20th, he texted up going to Georgia. And I was like, okay. And he goes, I don't know what to say about this. I said, I don't know either. This is weird. He texted him on the 20th? Yeah. And said he's going to Georgia? Yeah. But he didn't tell you that? Uh, when his schedule is up, sometimes when, he go, when we go to work, mm-hmm. he's only like sleeping in the car on the way to work. What about when you pick him up? Uh, when I pick him up, uh, he's on, we normally don't really talk that much. We okay. just, Go home and so apparently he got a message from your dad saying that he's going to Georgia on the 20th. He texted Cody that. Yeah, and he also Cody did, did ask me, "Have you talked to your dad lately?" I said, "I called him." When did he say that? When did Cody ask you that? Um, uh, the morning. Huh? Tuesday morning. Okay, but he still didn't tell you that he says going to Georgia. Yeah. Okay, and then on Wednesday he showed you the text about he said, hey, "Does your dad have cancer? Did you know that?" No, I know he has some bad spots on his back that look cancerous, mm-hmm. and that he, he's been going to see this one doctor, and the doctor had some x-rays done, and that he had uh, bone spurs. And yeah, where that, his back? Uh, all over his body. Okay. And that, so they were trying to find out why his lower lumbar is hurting him. Okay. Uh, he had a big aluminum log from Alcola fall on him and twist him down to the ground. It's so did you guys, what I'm asking is, did you guys have a lot of medical problems? Uh, does, lately, he seems like he's been having a lot of... I mean, does he take a lot of medication and stuff? No, he doesn't take any medication, take any except medication. for uh, ibuprofen and like... Prescription? Um, no. Uh, over no prescri- okay. Over-counter medicines. All right. So, so Wednesday night, though, on the 22nd, that's when you found out that on the 20th, he said that he's going to Georgia. Yeah. And then... Um, on the 22nd, was there anything else your dad said that he said he had a year later or something? Yeah, and I'm like, okay, and I'm going to try to call him, and the phone's turned off. Okay. And so would there be a reason why uh, he would text Cody that, not me? Well, my phone has been acting funny, like where it hasn't been getting text messages, or my dad said that he was having problems answering, like me answering my phone. While this is technically possible, it is suspiciously convenient that her father was having trouble sending her messages at this particular time. It also doesn't explain why he couldn't have come to her house to tell her in person. Because you have your PCS too? Or? I don't know, I have straight talk, but whenever you get towards the last part of where, before you get payment, if you use all your data up, it runs really slow. Like, What's straight talk? Is that a prepaid um, phone? Yes, sir. Where did you get that at? Walmart. Right. What about Cody's phone? What kind of phone does he have? Same company. He's straight the one talk. that actually told me about Straight Talk and said it was. But he better. gets better service or what? Yeah, we get better service no, at the house. He gets better service than you or what? Um, well, his um, his bill is due like the day before mine he, when he has to buy his new card. So he has fresh data on his card and mine. Right, but I'm trying to find out how come how come you your dad texts texts him and not you that. Um, my dad always talks to Cody and tells Cody more things. He does. He said that he doesn't want me to worry. Okay. Did he think Cody wasn't going to tell you? Um, Cody doesn't normally like know how to explain things to me. He's like, uh, this is going to sound bad, but I don't know how else to say it. That's how he puts it to me, and I'm like, just tell me. Now, that was on the 22nd? Yeah. 
And after, and when Cody showed you that stuff, was that in the evening or in the afternoon? Or? Uh, the evening, like he, he, had, I, he like held me and we cried. And then, did you guys stay at home after that, or don't go anywhere else after um, that? We walked over to his parents' house to be around people. Did you tell them, break the news to them? Yeah, they, well, they already knew before I did. Because he already told them? Yeah, okay. he showed them the text message. and they're Before like, you got home? Yeah. Okay. Because he so asked all... his parents for advice a lot at the uh -huh. time. Well, how do I do this? And not, you know, How old is he? Um, he's two years younger than me. He's 23, so he's still learning, and I'm still learning myself. So you're 25? Yes, sir. So... After all this, Wednesday evening, Wednesday night, after you saw the text, did you try calling your dad? Or? Yeah, I, I sent him a text message. Well, did he say he did he did he say when he was going in that text message? Like when he was going to Georgia? No, he didn't really say exactly when he was leaving out. Like to me, he didn't. No, I know that, but in the text message to Cody, did he say in the text message when he was leaving? Um, oh, he said okay. he won't be back. No, I know. Did he say when he was leaving? No. Okay. The reason why I asked that because his cars were there Monday and Tuesday. Yeah. Right? So I felt like something was going to happen to the truck, so I went down there and checked it, and that's when I seen the key. No, I understand that, but we're not there yet, but I'm saying, so Wednesday you find out that your dad says he's going to Georgia a year later. Did he say he's taking your baby? Yeah. Okay. But see family is what he said. But we know on the 20th and Monday the 20th and um, Tuesday the 21st, you drove by there and the cars were there. They're just situated different. Mm -hmm. So they probably haven't left yet at that point. Yeah. Like, how else would he get there? Uh, his girlfriend texted me and said that he rented a car Monday, and I'm thinking, well. She she told you he rented a car Monday? Yeah. Okay. And he's going to Georgia or something. And mm -hmm. I told her about the cancer, and she well, goes, Your dad don't have cancer. And I'm like, but when well, she, why she, you, why she texted you and said that he got a, he, um, he rented a car? Uh, we talked on the phone. Yeah. Okay. And um, what what you talking about, Vicky? Yeah, Vicky. Okay. Um, so she told you on the phone that that he rented a car. Did she say how she knew that? Uh, he texted her to her, but I okay. haven't seen the text on her phone at all to even know if she's telling the truth. Would she be lying, or what's her deal? I don't know. She's the last person that's seen my dad. Like she said that he came over to the house crying about me wanting to sign my rights away. And I said, I really don't want to because I love my kid, but I'm thinking of something who, that can help her, like get help. Well, so I'm saying. When did you have this phone conversation? So Wednesday night you find out about your dad leaving and you guys cry and meet with his parents and, you know, whatever. Yeah. Do you talk to Vicky that night? or? Yeah. That's when you talk on the phone? Yeah, we go down there to get the stuff to bring up to the house and everything. Say that again? We, we go down there to, between, those, between that day and Thursday, we went down there to get the stuff. No, I understand, but Wednesday night you talked on the phone to Vicki after you find out about? Yeah. Okay. Jesse's story becomes even more jumbled. Apparently, everyone had more interaction with her father than she did. A fact that the detectives are finding hard to believe. I've been talking with her nonstop. She's my dad's been gone. And lately, she's been mainly concerned about the bed that's in my bedroom. Like, oh, your dad said he gave me this bed. And I'm like, well, right now, I'm trying to find my dad. I understand. We'll get here. But so Wednesday, did you leave the house Wednesday after that, after you find out about, did you go Wednesday night to your dad's house? I, I voiced my concerns about getting the stuff. Like, if my dad's gone. So no, I know, I know you voiced your concerns about it, but did you go to your dad's house on Wednesday night? Yes. Okay. And yeah, what was it later that night? Yeah. I don't remember exactly what time it was. But it was dark. Was it dark? It was getting dark. Okay. Yeah. Who went to your dad's with you? Um, all of us. Who's all of us? Um, me, Cody, his parents. And like I I, I don't, my days are all jumbled up from work, and I don't, my time frame is just. Well, I know, I, I I'm not asking you to tell me you went somewhere at 2.20 p.m. or anything like that. But, but the same night you found out about the, the text messages all that, you went out there with Cody and his yeah. parents. And what did y'all do when you got out there? Um, what colors were, how was it set up? Um, well, I took the suburban over to my landlady's house. 
because I found the keys in the house and I found. So you went in the house first. Yeah. And when you went in the house, it was I think it's unlocked or do you have a key? I have a key. But was it locked or unlocked? It was locked. Okay, so you used your key to go inside yeah. the front door. Yeah. Okay, when you went in the front door, was there anything out of place or anything? It just stunk in there, but everything looked just like it did whenever you guys came over and I filled out that report. Okay, so it stunk and it wouldn't smell like? It just smelled like dead rats or okay. dead something. Okay. Uh, did you find out what that smell was? Well, I did find some rats and stuff and I threw them away. You found some rats? Yeah. Okay. Um, what well, was that the smell? Yeah. Where were they at? Uh, they were in the kitchen. You, oh, you have a rat, you guys rat problem in there? Yeah. Did he, has he had it for a while? Um, yeah. Does he put out rat traps or anything? Yeah, and that we've actually found rat feces right by the water here, which is the little door that's right behind the, um, dining room set. Okay. And then I found rat feces on the stove. So you identified the, the smell as the dead rats? Yeah. And, and you threw them away right then? Or? Yeah. Okay. And what else, what else was different about that? Um, I, just, I know how, I guess the deputy saw how it is now, but what else was different from times before you went there Wednesday night? Um, it just seems off. Well, it was a, I, I, said, I don't remember if it was Wednesday night or Thursday night. I, I can't remember those days. Okay. But when you went there, everything just got all. I understand. When you went there Wednesday night or Thursday night, whatever night it was, you went there and you went inside. You smelled, smelled something dead, you got the rats out. Yeah. And then did you go anywhere else and look to see, like, I mean, his car's over there. Did you call his name or your daughter's name? Or... Yeah, I did, but I didn't hear nothing. I searched the house, there was nothing in there. Was anything out of place or missing? Though? No. Okay. Just their stuff was, like, camp, some camping stuff was gone, um, clothes were gone, and pillows. Okay. Anything else missing? Mm, not that I can tell. I kind of just did it like quick walk through, and I just seen their clothes. And okay. Where was the Where was the keys of this apartment? Um, they hang up right by my dad's desk. Okay, so you get the keys, and what is Cody and his parents doing at this time? Are they inside? No. Um, they're waiting out the car. They're dealing with the dog kennel. Which is outside. Yeah. With your dog in it or something. Or his dog? Yeah, my dog was in it. Okay. Is it in the backyard? Um, it's in the side yard right in front of the old Ford. When they were dealing with it, what do you mean by that? They're um, taking it apart and... Was your dog in it? Yeah, my dog okay. has a lot of leash and we put her up on everything. Do what now? We tied her to the post of the okay. house. So they take your dog and then you take the... Is that when you take the, the um, suburban over to the landlords? Yeah. Where's the landlord in that? Um, over, um, like just right around the woods. Okay, just like around the block or something? Yeah. And did someone come pick you up over there? No, I just walked back. Okay, so how far did the walk is it? Uh, it's not that far. It just, <laughs> if you do a lot of walking, it yeah, kind of hurts. I don't know. Can you tell? <laughs> so, <laughs> you, you come back, what happens with the dog? Um, we take the dog with us up okay. to the house and everything. It, what about the truck? His truck? Um, his dad takes the, we take the kennel, we put it in the truck, and we take them up there. All of the cars were in place, and dead rats had been left on the floor. This would alarm anyone, and a complete search of the house would usually be made. Jesse didn't seem to bother, yet still somehow managed to notice that some camping gear was missing. To, uh, the house and everything, we set it up, and Cody goes to bed because he has to go to work. Okay. But you took your dad's truck up to your house? Yeah. Who drove the truck up there? Uh, George did, because I can't drive a six shift. Okay. Um, I tried, and I kind of keep showing this thing. Okay. So My dad actually laughed at when's me. The next, when's the next time you talk to your dad after that? Um, did your dad have a song with him, or did he try calling you guys? Or? I, I, I tried saying, okay, well, he, like, he told me to sell all this stuff. I'm like, boy, we won't. What the hell? I got overwhelmed with everything. Like, okay, wait, he's got cancer. He wants me to sell everything in his house. He wants me to do this and that. I went and I paid the bills to the electric company to keep the power on. Mm -hmm. uh, just, and I paid the storage unit so we wouldn't lose the stuff in there. Where's the storage unit? Um, Uncle Bob's in Plant <coughs> City. And where Plant City? Like Alexander Street or something. Uh, Uncle Bob's is a storage unit facility? Yeah. 
Lately, all my days are running together. That's fine. I Uncle Bob's storage. Is Uncle Bob close to the uh, farmer's market over there? Um, no, it's on Mount Sanders Street. What? By the Jiffy Lube. Okay. Right in that area. <clears throat> Where did you go? So you went. Whose storage unit is that? That's uh, my dad's, and he has me down as a beneficiary. And like some of the stuff in there is mine as well. Like, okay. It's kind of like Linker Mingle. So, <clears throat> so you take the. the this truck and the dog back to your house, and um, when do you go pay the uh, light, keep the lights on, whatever, pay the light bill and the shit, the uh, storage unit bill? I don't remember. I have it in the car. Right, was it like a couple days after? Or? Um, I don't remember. And I just know it's, it's like around the first. So are you thinking at this point, you guys like not coming back or something? Well, I didn't know if like he's freaking out. Like when I was little, when a big explosion happened at his job, he freaks out. We moved to Georgia and we live closer to family. Mm-hmm. He's losing his house and stuff. I'm moving to Florida because I, I just, I hate Georgia. Okay. They're growing up there. And he goes, okay, well, I'm losing my house and I'm, I'm losing my job and everything. What is going on? Can I come with you? Yeah, sure. Okay. I heard they do hot truck and everything. We move to Florida. Basically, it seems like whenever my dad gets a big scare, mm-hmm. he runs from the state that he actually had the big scare in, even though you can't really run from your problems. Right. So I told him. Yeah, well, I so do you think at this point, like you're paying these bills, do you think you guys are not coming back now? Like, is that why you're like taking the truck and the dog and make sure it's uh, paid for? Or? I took the dog up there because she has to be watched because she's Obviously. elderly. Right. Uh, well, she, even if she's a puppy, someone's going to watch her for you. Yeah. So, but you take the dog up there and then you pay pay the bills and that kind of thing. So, are you doing that because you think your dad's not coming back? Now I'm doing it because I just want to make sure everything's taken care of for him. If he comes back, I don't know what he's, what his plans are, what's going on through his mind at all. I just you, just you... make sure that things be okay for whenever he, it, okay, you know, it's just a two week scare or something. What about what about um, is your daughter on? She takes all his medication, right? Yeah. Is it was that at the house? Yeah. At my dad's house too. Yeah, I've seen that and I was kind of a little concerned. That's why I started calling family. And plus, I haven't been able to get a hold of him. He goes straight to voicemail. Mm-hmm. My friend Amy came to town. I hung out with her for a bit, talked to her about what's going on. Who's, who's Amy? Uh, she's my friend. She's in the Marine Corps. It was her last name. Um, Hunt. Amy Hunt? Is yeah. she from Hope County or Lakeland? Um, or? Plant City. Okay. Yeah. Is she back in on leave or something? Or? Uh, she was back for a little bit because she went to ATC <clears throat> to. Um, apply for them. She went to where? To the police force in uh, City? City. I think she said it was HCC. So she's back Hillsborough Community College? Um, HCC? Yeah, I think she, she went back to do like an interview and everything and to uh, see if she can get into the police academy when she gets out in December. No, I understand that, but is she here now and back in Florida? Um, no, she's left already. When did she leave? Um, she left um, the following Monday, I don't know what day it was, it was after her birthday. The following birthday. Monday from, um, from the calendar here. She left on a Monday? Yes, sir. So the following Monday after you, like the second day your daughter was at your dad's, she left a, a week later? Yeah. Okay. So that would have been on July 27th. 27th. She left on the 27th? Yeah. When did you hang out with her? Um, we hung out with her, I um, with her mom and her at Chili. No, when, when was that? Jesse keeps partially answering questions or giving locations rather than dates. It could be a deliberate attempt to dodge the questions while still giving the appearance of compliance. I think it was Saturday, Saturday or Sunday. A couple of days before she left. Yeah, and I hung, I hung out with her on Sunday, too. Okay. Did you tell her about, like, your situation with your dad? Like, so yeah. Like, she what said, she well, calm down, call the family, see what's going on with them, see if he's up there. You know, he likes to go camping and stuff, and that his camping stuff is missing, so, you well, know. Did you tell her that your daughter's medication was still at the house? Yeah, she goes, well. All of her medication is? Yeah. Right. All three uh, bottles that they gave her. Okay. Um, she said, hmm, well, she does behave better with him, but maybe he can go up there to take it to a doctor up there. As I mentioned that, too, I think I left it in a voice, and I'm not sure. 
What? Um, to take it to the doctor up there. Okay. I don't. I don't remember. Okay. Um, I talked to her counselor too. This counselor came over to the house. I talked with her about how Mary's gone and with my dad up to Georgia. And I, what counselor? Um, her, her counselor? Yeah, her counselor. She came out of your house? Yes. When was that? Um, it was on a Wednesday. So this past Wednesday? No, Tuesday, I'm sorry. Tuesday at 11. So, so this past like several days ago? Yeah. Talk with her and you told her that your daughter's gone with your grand with your dad. Yeah. Did you tell her that her medications were here? Yeah. She goes, well, he needs to get her medication. I said, I know, and that's why I'm trying to get in contact with him, and I'm trying to find out where my family, which one he went with, because mm -hmm. like we have a big family, and he knows a lot of people up there. So, and that nobody talked about uh, Georgetown, Georgia where Landlady had another house and he has a key to it. Mm -hmm. So. But uh, did you ever contact any of your family? Yeah, I, I've, you I've been about? talking to my Aunt Jan, my Aunt Sharon. Um, I've been talking to my cousin Tara on Facebook. I, you have Facebook? Yeah. What's your Facebook name? Uh, What's your name? Just my name. Do you, have, do you go by anything else other than Cheyenne? No. Is it Cheyenne Jesse on Facebook? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah what's Tara's last name? Um, Harden. It's, it's weekly now, but on Facebook it's still Tara Harden. Harden Head or something. Okay. I can't pronounce it. And did you ask them, hey, you see my dad? Yeah, I've, I've talked to them and stuff like that. And I've, as I was like, hey, what's going on and stuff, and I'm like, well, this is what I know. I even, they even posted a thing on there and I even put on there what I know. Um, that he's took with him and that he said something about cancer and um, my, my my dad wouldn't say he had cancer unless he had it because he knew it, it freaked me out unless he was trying to teach me a lesson but and show me that I do care about my kid mm -hmm. and so you contacted all these family members did they say they would seen your dad or heard from your dad they call around and everything they said uh, that he said that he rented a car tried to rent all places I tried going to the bank and asking them I understand what bank um, JT Federal Credit Union and like, it? um, it's in Plant well it's in Plant City and Lake Bloom and they have one in Tampa as well but you went to the bank yeah which which which, which branch um, I went to Plant City and I told him I where's that in Plant City um, it's the same strip that uh, Los is on, Jim Redman Parkway. Okay. JT, what's the name of it? Uh, GTE. Oh, GTE Bank? Yes. And so what day did you go there? Was this after you talked to your cousin, or not your cousin, um, think, Amy from the Marines? Um, she left on Monday, so did you see her on that Monday she left? No. Okay. Is that? Do you know what day you went to the bank, um, starting from Monday? No, it actually everything just starts fumbling in where me trying to have to go back, do work and trying to figure out you, where. When you went to the bank, did you go inside there? Yes, sir. And who did you talk to? Um, I talked to one of the ladies I always talk to, and I don't know her name. What's she look like? Um, there's one with gray curly hair. There's one with straight hair. What was the girl you talked to the other day? Uh, I think it that? was the, I think it was the girl with the straight hair. The younger girl or? Yeah. White, black. White. And do you bank there too? Yeah. Okay, so that's why you always talk to them. Yeah. They know you, I guess. Yeah. And, and you went there and you asked them what? Um, I was wondering if you can uh, pull up my dad's uh, account and see if, if he rented a car through using his bank card or something like that. They said, well, let's see if you're on the account. I'm like, well, I know I'm a beneficiary or anything, but like to make sure that I can close this account if anything happens to him or anything like that. I said, but I just want to see if you rented the car through using this bank card or something. And they said, well, we can't divulge that information to you. Okay. I'm like, well, I'm really concerned because I ain't heard from my dad in a couple of days. Mm -hmm. I just, How concerned were you at that point? I was pretty freaking out. Like, I, like as I'm driving, I'm crying. Like, okay. I'm, I've cried so much. So do you think really, something's wrong at this point? Well, I'm starting to feel like something's wrong. Okay. Because, I mean... And I'm thinking, okay, well, what the heck am I supposed to do? So I call my uncle and everything, use my aunt's number, and I talked to all of them, and they said, okay. What's that about you called using, what do you mean using your aunt's number? My aunt's phone. Oh, okay. Who's your aunt? Uh, Janice Weekly. Where's she live at? 
Um, she lives with my uncle Steve. Okay, where's that at? Did you go to Georgia or something? No, I called there. I I haven't been out of the Oh, you state. called you called there and, and your aunt. Yeah. And he got on the phone. Yeah. Okay. I've been talking with them for the past couple of days now, like trying to figure out um, who all his friends are. I even have my uncle George, which is my godfather. Um, he lives in by Durant High School. Um, I asked him, okay, do you guys know of anything like that? And, like where he could be? Have you seen him or mm-hmm. heard anything about him? Having Did you him? tell them that he was with your daughter? Yeah, okay. I said my daughter and him are missing, and my Uncle Mike posted on my Facebook, where's Mark? And like everybody else started commenting on there while I'm trying to call people and I'm I'm getting flustered because I'm like, I don't know what to do. And right. he's calmed me down several times and say, hey, look, calm down because you can't focus on everything if you're like, f- fuzzer buzzle. Huh? Fuzzer buzzle, okay. you know, flustered. Okay. But... Uh, like, so you go to the bank, they won't tell you anything because you're not on the counter. Yeah, there. and then I get so my So you don't find out anything there. No, I get my aunt and uncle. Do you, do you know about what day that is? Because let's go back, because Amy left on Monday. Yeah. Do you know about when it was you went to the bank? Was it like, like today's Saturday night, Sunday morning. Was it like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or was it Friday that you went there? Or uh, did you work that day you went to the bank? No, I was, I was off. I went around based, yeah, I was off. It was the day I went and paid the... At the shed and all that? Yeah. Georgia? Okay. And when you went to the bank, were you by yourself? Yeah. Okay. Um, and what's the next thing that happens after you go to the bank and I guess throughout the days you're talking to your family and stuff? Yeah. What's the next thing? Did you go back to the house again? I went back there and looked and to see it. When was that? Uh... I know you were there today, earlier today, but when you, I guess y'all called the police from there? Yeah. Okay. How many, mm-hmm. when did you go back there before today? Um, the day before me and Matthew went and got a couple of things out of the house because I got concerned. Okay, well, you know. What did you go get out of the house? Um, I got picture frames, uh, like family pictures and stuff. I got some of his tools. That's the way, like, that was my grandfather, he said. Uh, things that he meant to him, and I got his DVDs out of there that are mixed with mine mm-hmm. in the case, and then I got um, his crossbow that he had. But nothing was missing at all except for his camping stuff and the clothes? Yeah. Nothing else? Nothing, nothing significant was missing? Um, he, in his text messages, he said he got what he wanted, he got what he need, sell the rest. I don't care about it, basically. Okay. I mean, the, what about this thirty thousand dollars? Is that there? No, the tower was missing too. Oh, okay. The tower. That, uh, that, Isn't that pretty significant? Yeah, like my dad. I like. I asked him. I was. I don't know what you're talking about. Say that again. He said that he didn't know what I was talking about. I said, "Well, I just seen you counting," and he goes, "What are you talking about? Like you, like your dad? Yeah, like, like one day you saw your dad counting all this money." Yeah, and I asked him about it. Like this was a while back for me and Cody got together. Okay, so you're still living there. Yeah. So he's counting all his money where in like the living room? In his bedroom. Okay. And did he say where he got the money from? No. He never told me. And he just he said, just kind of basically blushes off like, I don't know what you're talking well, about. Well, how do you know it's a computer tower? Because I seen him put it in it. Oh, that same night? Yeah. Okay. But he's counting it because I walked by it before and he kind of jumpy. Okay. Like, I don't know what my, my dad said he had a pass a long time ago that, and I don't know what it is. Okay, like a secret pass? Yeah. Was he in the military? No. Okay. An unexplained amount of money and a secret past. It is almost like Jesse is pulling her story from a thriller. None of it makes sense, and it is far too convenient to be believable. So um, you, go I, there, you go over there a couple times. Like, how many times did you go over there and get stuff out of there? Um, I just got stuff out of there um, yesterday. Just the only day? Yeah. So was it on Friday? Yeah. Okay. I mean, who, who went over there with you? Matthew. Okay. Yeah. And what? he goes, I really don't feel right touching this stuff. I said, well, I, I'm kind of, I don't, I don't know. I'm just afraid that something's going to happen to the house. Like, mm-hmm. someone's going to break in or anything. So, what else did you take? The I, tools? The tools, the family pictures, the movies, and the crossbow that he had in there. And then he also had a, he also had a, um, 
a Walking Dead uh, game thing. You plug up to the TV and you feel like you're shooting zombies. Okay. Um, I also took his tackle boxes too. Did your dad have any guns? My dad does have guns. I took his I, I took his guns um, before he left. You took his guns before he left? Yeah, it was a uh, um, snake charmer and a couple. And what's, the, what's the snake charmer? Uh, I don't know. It's about like this tall, it's silver and black. That's all I know. I don't know what kind. I don't it's know. Like a, it's a rifle. Yeah. Okay. You took that. And then it had two other old guns with it, and I just kind of. What kind of guns? Like handguns or long guns? Long guns. So you took three guns. Yeah. Just before you left. Yeah. He let you take them. Yeah, he told me uh, take them where they'll be safer instead of out in that old truck where people can probably break into it. Okay, where'd you put the guns at? Um, I put them in the camper, and then Cody took them over <coughs> to the house. To, and where'd there? you put them at in the camper? Um, I put them behind my daughter's cot. Okay. Uh, um, how long were they? Why she was at Peace River. So they only been there like a week? Not Peace River, but that hospital. In Orlando? Yeah. So they were only there like a week? or what? Yeah. When did you take them over to Cody's? Um, uh, the Cody's parents' house. Um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I took them over there before Meredith came back. If I remember correctly, I don't know. Everything's all jumbled up. Oh, no, but what if you have taken over there before Meredith got back? Because you said you had to even hide knives. Yeah. So I would imagine you would leave them there when Meredith was there, right? No, like, yeah. I don't leave nothing around with Meredith yeah. around. So it hadn't been before she got back, yeah. I'm assuming. All right. So so he has three guns, that's it? Yeah. But, uh, I know he has a handheld revolver that, that was missing, too. Oh, that's missing? Yeah. Okay. It, like, I just figure, okay, well, you know, he takes it with him because he always keeps it in his pocket. Okay. Well, right. how big is it? Um, Does it look like a cowboy gun? Yeah. Yeah. It was like little, it's like it's handheld and... How long is the barrel? I mean, how long is the guy thing? Like, show me. I know, I'm not uh, trying to say how many inches. Okay, that right there or so. How many bullets is it on? Um, I don't know. I never really like, looked at it either. Yeah, I got a gun. Bought it off the dude who lived here before. Is there that's it? Yeah. Okay. What color is it? Um, silver. With like the regular uh, wood kind of on the handle of the Cody. Do you know what kind of gun it is? Like what caliber yeah. or anything? No, sir. You think it's like a 9mm? I don't know. But it's a wheel on it? Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know what. I but just, that gun's missing, you have no idea where it's at? Yeah. When was the last time you touched the gun? Um, I, I tell them I don't really care to touch guns, really. Have you ever touched that gun? No. Has, has Cody ever touched that gun? No. Where does your dad normally keep that gun? By right by him, because he always you know, like he's he went away like this a couple of times whenever I walk into his house, and I say, well, you left the door open and everything. He goes, you got a shot. Okay. Would you say he keeps it right by him, like wherever he goes? Yeah, like it'll be underneath his pillowcase with him, or it'll be like uh, like little cubbies or anything underneath the couch. But he doesn't have like a random storage stand. place like inside this nightstand. No. It's always just laying out in a holster or? Uh, no, it just lays like underneath the pillow with him because he's all, sometimes he's a heavy sleeper, sometimes he's a light sleeper. It depends on how tired he gets that day or a day. Okay. Or so, how much medicine he took or so where, in the beer. Yeah, your dad has his own room? Yeah. And where does your daughter sleep when she's there? Uh, she sleeps in the bedroom with uh, her bed and my bed in it. That was our bedroom. When you, when you went over to the house any of these days, well, the rats were there. That, that I guess that first day you went there and you threw yeah. away. Um, was that the only thing that was smelling that y'all threw away? No, I threw a, um, I found a coon underneath the house. I took it out and threw you it. You found out. a what? A raccoon? Yeah. A dead one? Yeah. Underneath the house? Yeah. How'd you, how'd you find that under the house? Why'd you look under there? So I was trying to figure out where that smell was coming from. Okay. I looked around that, like there, I cleaned up dog shit. But it wasn't dog shit. That's not that bad. Yeah. I, so I, the I, rats were dead in the kitchen. Yeah. And there was a dead raccoon under the house. Yeah. With that many dead animals on the property, there should have been an indication that something was horribly wrong. Okay. Well, how did you look at the house? How did you do that? Um, my dad's flashlight. <clears throat> no, how did you, is it, is it lattice or covering around it? Um, it's got one spot that's broken right there. So if you look underneath there. Broken like how? 
Like it's been bent, like someone's been underneath there. Okay, is it all the way on the ground or? No, it's just like bent, like where someone's been reaching underneath there. So you looked under there with the flashlight and you saw a dead raccoon? Yeah. Where was it at and how far? Um, right by the air vent. I don't know where that's at. Uh, how far did you have to crawl under there? I ran, I took a big long thing and shoved it underneath there to pull it out. What did you use to pull it out? Uh, it's like one of the thingies that you go and you cut trees with or something. Like a pole saw? Yeah, that thingy. Okay. Like a manual pole saw? Yeah. And you stuck that under and drug it out? Yeah. Okay. What would you do with that kid? I threw it out in the woods. You did? Yeah. We're at we're at the woods. Like if I'm looking at the house, uh, what side of the house was the raccoon on? Front, back, side? Here's the house. Here's where that is. No, dude, here's what, like if that borders the house, never mind it. I don't know what all the stuff is in there. But if that borders the front of the house, we're in the street, what side of the house was the raccoon on? Yeah, we're looking at the house from the street. Yeah. All right, that side. The left side? Yeah. Okay. And? I just chalked it out there. I don't know where it went. So you took, if this is the side of the house, this is the bottom of the house down here. You're over here. You see the raccoon. You pull it out. You throw it in the woods over here? Yeah. Okay. How far is in there did you go? I don't roughly know, I guess. Okay. Was that the same night you found the rats? Yeah. Where would you throw the rats out of the woods to? Yeah, I just... Nothing out of the house pretty clean other than that? No food left out or anything? No, nothing left out except for the hamburger meat that was inside the sink that I threw out in the trash can Thursday because the, there was like maggots and stuff. Okay. This Friday morning is a uh, trash night. But was the house pretty clean though? Did you, yeah. have to do, did you do any cleaning? No, sir. Okay. Um, I spray the floor with roach killer spray uh, because of fleas being bad in the house. When did you do that? Um, I, I do that every time I walk in the house. Oh, so sure. he's got roach killer there? Yeah. Okay. You didn't go buy any or anything like that? I bought some extra ones for him and I yeah. bought some bombs to throw off in the house when too. When did you do that? When did you buy those? Uh, I don't remember. I bought my job. I bought some boxes, so that's why we packed some of his stuff up. Cause he this is after he left, you bought yeah. the bombs? Yeah. Just buying clean and stuff? Um, I bought laundry soap for us to use at the house so I could wash my clothes. Why don't you buy any other clean and stuff for your dad's house? No, just basically, just, I bought paint for mine and Cody's place, so we were fixing to paint our bedroom to oh. lighten it up in there. I bought some... Um, the boxes and some tape to box up some of this stuff since he wanted to get rid of it all. I was just going to throw it into a storage unit with my name on it. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'd be like, hey, here's your stuff. You know, I don't really want to get rid of your stuff. Here it is. You, you, you do with it. It's yours. So what kind of bombs did you buy at Lowe's? Um, little fogger, the purple ones. Like just single ones or they come in package? Uh, they come in like a three package. Okay. How many packages did you buy? Two of them. What else did you buy for the house? Um, I bought some air freshener and some candles. Have? My dad's house always stinks. Does it always smell like dead animals? Like, oh, well, he's dealt with rats before, and mm -hmm. it, he smokes constantly, and like mm -hmm. propane smell from him using it on the stove. Okay. Cause his stove went out from roaches. Okay. It's kind of nice when I was in with my fiance. Is it a gas stove? Um, it was an electric stove. Okay. The little thingy up here that tells you the time and everything, it won't let you push to turn it on or anything or okay. do anything with it. So you bought the, the uh, air freshener candles and two packages of uh, bombs? Yeah. Okay. I set them off so that's way the house could like get rid of the roaches and stuff. When did you do that? Uh, I set them off before I went to pick Cody up Friday. On Friday? Yeah. Did you notice anything else in the house that didn't look right? I just, I looked around and I'm, I see where my dad looked like he laid blankets out on the couch to like lay on and stuff. I mean, I've sat on the, the couches and then that's just, I just still smell a funny smell and I just wondered. You sat on the couches when, since your dad left? Yeah. Okay, was the sheets there? Yeah. Um, but did your dad know him sleep on the couch or? Sometimes he falls asleep on the couch, but he mainly sleeps in his bed because that's, that's his couch hurts his back and he has to be up and down all the time. So, so what, he doesn't normally sleep on the couch then? Um, he, his back or what? 
Um, he used to sleep on the couch when we had that one that fell on the porch mm -hmm. in the house. Although Jesse had given the impression earlier that things are tense between her and her father and that they don't communicate well, she still has a detailed knowledge of his habits and routines. She claims to be unsure of his sleep patterns, but in the next sentence, confidently replies that she knows where he sleeps. But he started hurting his back really bad, so he started like, going back to his bed. How long has he been back in his bed? Uh, I don't know what his sleep pattern's been like since I've been with my fiance. Okay. But before you left, was he sleeping back in his bed again, or what? Yeah. Okay. Now, was it just sheets on the couch, or was it? Sh and what, what's his furniture? Was he got um, like, rocking got chairs? Like, no, it's like it's a. Um, like a double power recliner thing. It's a what? Double, uh, like power, you know, you push the button and it raises It's just for one person? Uh, no, it's for two people to sit right here. And so it's like, a love seat? Yeah, and like a couch over here. Okay, where do you, is that, he has a love seat and a couch, that's it? Yeah, and then he got it. the love seat reclines? Yeah, and the couch has some that reclines. Where did he get that from? Um, the landlady cleaned out one of the old houses, had him do that. And she said, well, since they haven't claimed the furniture or anything, you can have the couch. Okay. They already have loaded into the house. What about the love seat? That too? Mm -hmm. okay. He said that he was never moving that couch again. It was heavy. So was the what had the sheet on it? The couch or the love seat? The, um, the love seat had a sheet on it, which was my old Barbie sheet. Um, and then it had a pillowcase with my Barbie doll. A uh, Barbie pillowcase on it, and then the couch had my old lines and blanket thrown on it, and the pillow thrown on it. Okay. Like, if my daughter was laying on the chair or couch or something, like that's where they could lay down and they could sit comfortably and watch the TV. Okay. Um, um, did you, did you... I, I did take the pillowcase off the pillowcase off of that little pillow and put it on the big pillow so we could take a nap while we were waiting to figure. Uh, what's going on with my kid and my dad? Okay. Um, but so you didn't put the sheets there and pillows and stuff. They were they already there. Yes, sir. When you the first time you went in there, um, I guess it was that Wednesday night when you went there and y'all moved the trucks and cars and all that. Was those sheets there then? Yeah. Okay. I, I was. That's it. And there's, everything's the same. Nothing's really changed. Uh, well, I mean, besides the fact that his guns missing. Yeah. And. His clothes, his clothes and, and his and money, his tower, his his tower with his money in. And a couple fish. And you saw that on when you saw that on Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. That's and right. there was a dead. There were two dead rats in there, and then the dead uh, raccoon underneath the house. Yeah. When did you get the raccoon from underneath the house? Um. I don't remember that the day. And so who's so easy? Was your, it's just one with the jumble together in my mind because there's just so much that's happened and I've been worried so sick and mm -hmm. well let me just, ask, did, you, did your guy take his phone with him or did he tell you he was going to call you or what uh, he said he was getting a new number and so I've been waiting for a new number and it didn't never happen so I started calling this one I really and Vicky said something weird what did she say uh, she said I don't know if your dad's dead or something in the house I said, when we've been in the house, there's no, no, there's nothing there. Okay. So why would you say that? Why are you like freaking me out here? Cause like, where'd, you, you, go, where'd you go to the ground beef at? Um, in a trash can. Like the one that goes to the road? Yeah. What, what day was that? Uh, it was Thursday. Okay. When does the trash come? Friday morning. Did you take the trash out of the street? No. You don't need to, or I mean, uh, they no. come on the property and get it? Um, no, I, Josh always takes the trash out for us. Who's um, Josh? The neighbor. Okay. Um, so even for your dad, he took the trash to the street? He normally does. Um, like if my dad's out of town or something, uh -huh. he'll do that. Okay. I have him watch the house for me to see if anything's going on. Yeah, if he does cars, it doesn't look like he's out of town. Unless he told him he's going to Georgia, right? Well. Yeah, I asked him if he knew about my dad going to Georgia or anything. He said, no, I didn't know. I said, well, he said he had cancer. I told them that. When asked about the trash, Jesse grows hesitant, as if she hasn't thought this part of her story through. Everything. But as far as you know, did the trash come and get the 
Yeah, I think we found it when we came there. What else was in the trash can? There were some black bags in there. How, how, how full was the... When you threw a beat and meat in there, how full was it? Um, it was about probably halfway full. Okay. I didn't really open the bags. I didn't no, I understand, but, but I just threw the meat in there, about half full? Yeah, there was thing. enough to throw the trash cans in the, in the, um, what by the washer or in the bathroom in there. Okay. Um, did you know, did you see your dad's phone at, at his house? Um, the iPhone was at his house. I took it over to the landlady's, um... And I, I didn't know it was like the iPhone until like we took the case off of it and it said iPhone. And I, I thought that was the iPhone, like, okay, that's the trailer park number. And then I seen an iPhone right. case in the uh, right. drawer. Right. Right. I thought, about, wait a minute. Your dad has a, the landlady gets him a phone? Yeah, okay. for trailer parks. Okay. He for, has, for maintenance? Yeah. Okay, so is that an iPhone? Yeah. Okay, what's his personal phone? His personal phone is like an A something or other. I can't pronounce the name of it. Is it like a smartphone or flip Yeah, phone? a smartphone. Okay. Android. Well, was that at the house? Um, yeah. Okay. Did you find that strange? Yeah. Okay. And Andy... No, that, that was in the Suburban. I brought it to the house. To show what was in the Suburban? The Android phone. Like as if it was just tossed Your in Your dad's phone? Yeah, okay. like it was just tossed in there. and So when you found that whenever you moved to Suburban? Yeah. And you brought it there? To the house. Okay. And, um, and then I what about the phone home. for that the landlord gave him? Where did you, what did you do with that? I put it at the landlady's house. Where did you find it at? Though? Inside the house? Inside his house. Right. That's what, and then you took that to the landlady's house? Yeah. Okay. And then, is she there? No, she's in Utah right now. Okay. I, I, you have I, a key and stuff? I cranked the Suburban up and I hit the power thing to open the garage oh, and I go okay. in there. I'm and then you can get in the house from there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I basically checked the dog and see if it had food and water for her. Where would you put the phone at? I put it up on the table and then when me and my fiance came Thursday, we went in there and I guess he must have put it in his pocket. Why? Um, he said there might be something on here we needed and I said I don't know and I, I was kind of dealing with the dog and I've been flustered because I, I can't focus. But no one did any cleaning in the house besides, there didn't need to be any cleaning done in that house? No. Okay. No, I just, well, he, he needed his dishes done it because they were... Did you do them? No. But you, but you, you didn't do the dishes, but you got rid of the bugs, right? Yeah, I sprayed, I put the spray off in the house. Well, why would you do that and not do the dishes? Well, the dishes are already done in the drainer. And then I thought you like, said he needed to do the dishes. Yeah, like pots and pan in the sink. That were dirty? Yeah. Why didn't you wash those? I just didn't uh, want to touch it. It's, but you know, it's nasty but water. I don't but you'll touch a rag, dead raccoon? I like tongs I use. What tongs? There are some tongs that my daddy keeps in the shore. Where's the tongs at now? He threw them away. Where? In the trash can. But I did After like, you threw... After you threw the raccoon in the woods, you threw the tongs away in the trash can? Yeah. Where'd you get the tongs from? The kitchen. He has like several kinds of that's grilling. But you didn't do any sprinkling, scrubbing, or anything like that? No, sir. Okay. Um, what do you think what do you think happened to your to your dad and your daughter? I don't know. Well, what's your gut feeling? What do you think happened? I'm afraid that like maybe he didn't leave Florida and he went over to Becky's house and she did something. That's what I'm feeling. Like, she did what? I don't know, because she's, like, I don't know, I feel weird when I'm around her. Okay, what do you think she did? I think she might have hurt them or something, or maybe she has them in her house. When did you start getting that feeling? When she started being more concerned about that stupid bed versus my daddy. Okay. Um, what, what prompted did you finally call the police? I mean, well, I haven't, we, I've done... Checked everything out to see if he really did go up there and found everybody that I talked to. And I was like, well, I still ain't talked to him. And I'm really freaking concerned. And so I went and I looked and your office was, uh, the the um, state troopers was closed. Mm -hmm. So I waited until the morning to try to call you guys because I didn't know what the numbers were. Mm -hmm. And I, my friend uh, that's friends with Matthew mm -hmm. and Cody. Um, his name's Kurt, and 
king and his wife give us a number to call you guys? What number? 911? No, not 911. The actual police place. The sheriff's office? Yes, sir. Okay. And we had you have a move that's out there. So, did you know Cody, Cody took that phone out of there? I mean... Um, no, and he... When he gets... When he normally gets off work and stuff, he gets, like... He doesn't really think. He yeah, you told me. But when, when did you find out he took the phone? Uh, like when we were there at the house, when we were looking, and he, I guess he must have slipped his mind. When you were at what house? Uh, my dad's house. Right. What, you talking about today? Yes. That's when you found out he had the phone? Yeah. Okay. Did you, isn't it true you found out that he had the phone? Yeah, he goes, okay, I didn't know what this phone was, like. I was like, okay, well, I thought, because I was thinking that, okay, well, did Dad buy an iPhone 5? Because I know he had one for the landlady. No, hold on. Isn't it true you found out he had the phone whenever he, in front of the police? Yeah. Okay. I was and, like, okay. Did, thought, did you ask him why he had the phone? Yeah, he goes, remember I took it? I said, no, I, I can't remember anything. Like, everything's so fun. Yeah, but you phone. said when he took, but you told me earlier, when he took it, he said maybe there's something on it. Yeah, and I, uh, I didn't think he, I said, until I told him to also put it down. I know, but so you just, but you also just said you didn't know he had the phone until the police were there. Yeah. So did you know he had the phone at the house when he took it, or did you know he had the phone when the police were there? He had the phone in his hand when we were at the house, at the landlady's house. And then I just thought he might put it down after I told him to. And then I didn't know he really like, actually kept it with him. I guess he forgot about it. But we, we forget a lot when we're worrying about somebody's life here. Mm-hmm. When did you start worrying about their lives? When I can't get in contact with them, my family ain't in contact with them, and Vicky's all she is is concerned about this stupid bed. Okay. Why is all the stuff in your dad's room piled on the bed? Because I was, I was getting the family photos out of the closet, so that's why they wouldn't get ruined. So what all did you stack on the bed? Just property, or was there... Uh, Does he get? Did he get like three mattresses on there or something? Yeah, yeah. That that's always been there. That's how he had say so he had to make it comfortable for him to lay on. Is there sheets on it? Yeah. Okay. So you just started stacking stuff up on the floor on the bed. Yeah. You didn't see anything there or anything like any blood or anything like that. No, sir. Okay. And what? And what's the blocking board? Is the album at the photo album? Um, they're in the closet. That's where my daddy. Is put it them. an album or friends? Um, there's a couple album books, there's some boxes that have uh, pictures in them, and then there's like the plastic tote kind of things, and then there's like um, the, uh, what's your, like an old suitcase kind of looking, like it has so old, old you, you bank at GT as well? Yes, sir. Okay, what about Matthew? Okay. Um, he was our bill. Which bank does he want to use? Which branch? Um, he normally either has his mom take him up to the hills or the one there in Lakeland. The okay. one uh, by Publix? Yeah. And that plaza there? Yes, sir. Okay. He normally has me a card and I punch it in for him. Do you have an ATM card and all that? Yeah, he does. Do you have your own ATM yeah. card and all that? I have my own ATM card. Is, I have, you, is uh, your check direct, direct deposit? Yes, sir. From work? Yes, sir. Okay. And, um, do you only use the ATM or for money, or do you keep money on you? Or? Uh, I don't want to keep money on me, I, or I'll just use my bank card for gas and stuff, and he'll give me some money every now and then. Okay. Uh, let me ask you something. Do you know, uh, did you graduate high school? Um, yeah, I graduated with special ed. Okay. Did you go to college? No, I've been wanting to, but okay. I just kind of, I want to focus more on my daughter. Okay. You say special ed, you graduated? What, what does that mean? Um, basically, my reading and my spelling kind of sucks. Okay, like a slow learner type thing? The detectives will need to track Jessie's finances to see if she bought anything that could be traced back to the crime. Yeah. Okay, but you, you have a job and... Yeah. You know, so you can, are you a cashier? Yeah. Okay, so you can count money and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, well, it takes me a while to learn something, but once I learn it, I'm, I'm pretty good at it, and I've been a cashier before up in Georgia. Okay. So, at Lowe's? Um, no, um, up in Georgia, I've worked at Pizza Hut was my first job. My cousin Tara. Were you, were you, were you a server? 
um, no, I was a person who did the prepping and washing the dishes. Okay. With everyone who washed wash dishes. Right. But now you work with money and pretty good. Have you ever been accused of stealing money or didn't count well or anything? No, sir. Okay. Um, I double count. I double counted it again. I count it once, I count it twice, and I count it to the customer. Okay. Because I was right. taught at Dollar General when I worked there. And As I a worked, cashier? Yes. Okay. Um, I worked at McDonald's as a cashier. To when I was pregnant with my daughter. Do you, do you know how uh, cell, tel, cell, cellular, the cell phones work? Do you know how these work? Uh, they don't have a plug, like a, a, a house phone, do they? They don't have like a cord and stuff, right? No, they're wireless. Right. Do you know how the wireless works, though? Um, yeah, it bounces off the satellite, right? Sort of. Have you ever cell seen those towers? Cell towers. Have you ever seen those cell towers? They're tall, they get like things coming off of them? Yeah. That's what your cell phone uses, okay? Yeah. If you live in an area where you don't get that much signal yeah. on your phone, and it's like sometimes it doesn't work, why do you think that is? Um, because you're in a bad area. And well, what, what do you mean by bad area? Like maybe there's like it's not picking up the frequencies or something like that. Do you like, think maybe because there's not a tower nearby? Probably. Okay. Um, if you were in the middle of the desert and there were no cell phone towers, do you think your cell phones are going to work? No. Okay. So the only way your cell phone works is by cell towers, right? Yeah. Okay. So if you if you uh, drive from your house, let's say there's a cell tower in your front yard. I'm not saying there is. Okay. Let's say there's a cell tower in your front yard. If, do you think your phone is going to be using that cell tower at your house? Yeah. Okay. Do you think if you drive to Plant City and go to Lowe's, do you think your cell phone is going to be using that same tower? No. Because what? Uh, there might be another one, probably. Or Closer? Yeah. Okay. Um, so... My dad explained it to me. He did? Yeah. Why did you, why did you do that? He wanted me to learn. Um, when did he explain that to you? Um, whenever I first got a cell phone. Okay. So having said that, if your dad, he lives 45 minutes from you, you say? Yeah. So it's several miles, and I know I'm familiar with... You're up way up on 98 North, right? Yeah. Almost to a different county, right? Yeah. And your dad is all the way down south, almost to a different county, right? Yeah. Like Hillsborough County, which is like yeah. city and stuff. So do you do you think that if you're talking to him on your cell phone in your house, and he's talking to you on his cell phone in his house, do you think both of you guys are using the same tower? No. Okay. So when you're traveling, we've learned that when you're traveling, your phone is going to use the closest tower. Okay. Right. Um, I'm telling you that because whenever um, your phone, your dad's phone is being used, we can we're, we're going to get all those phone records. Okay. okay? Um, we're also going to get all your phone records. Okay. We're also going to get all Matthew's phone records or Cody's okay. phone records. And I'm going to be. It's it's going to show you. It's going to show us everybody you're calling and texting, whether the phone call went through or not, um, and where you were when you made those phone calls. Same thing with your dad's phone. Okay? Yeah. Um, we're gonna see. We're gonna see text messages. The stuff is deleted. It's not deleted. The the stuff might be deleted off the phone, but it's still on your computer somewhere. See mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if I text him a bunch I, of stuff. Yeah, I know? found that weird that all the text messages were kind of blank, and I have been. Uh, like Josh said that he's been seeing this guy rides down the road with a bicycle too. Was it where? What do you mean? Um, like. Every day, there's a guy that rides down the road in a what, 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 what? Um, drain field. Okay, what, what does that mean? I don't know. I was just thinking that... Well, this, that guy that you just said has nothing to do with this case. Yeah. Right? Zero. A guy that doesn't exist. Okay. So, um... I believe this is a different I know, but, thing but here's the deal. Is that, so, we're going to be able to see all... If you need stuff to lead off the phone, we're going to be able to see the text messages and... Everybody called and stuff and whatever. It stays in the computer, okay? Mm -hmm. And this goes back for years, yeah. okay? Um, so we'll be able to get stuff from last week and the week before that and all that stuff. Um, we're also, um, I'm just, I'm concerned about a lot of stuff here, um, Cheyenne, okay? Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I'm not saying you're a bad person at all. I know you have a very tough life, okay? Uh, having to deal with your daughter and those situations, and uh, do you love your daughter? Yes, sir. Okay. I love her with all my heart. All right. Um, 
but I know you're having a tough time with that, and, and it's affecting your relationship um, because you, you said that even with your daughter not there, it's made it better for you and Cody to work on your problems and get better as a unit. So, uh, so we can handle her. Right, right. Um, but, but I have a, a here's, here's what I know. Um, I have a weird suspicion that um, that we're not going to find a raccoon in the woods by by your by your dad's house, are we? I threw one out there. Are we going to find a raccoon that you threw out there and show you? It should be out there. I don't know if it is a animal that runs wild out there. I don't know. So if it's not there, uh, an animal can be out. I don't know. I don't know what. Go on in my neighborhood. Well, we know a dead raccoon is not going to be picked up by the guy on the bicycle, right? No. So I'm saying if it's not there, you're saying it's got to be the animals that got it, right? I threw one out there. That's all I know. I know. Are we going to find it out there? It should be able to find one out there. Cause but I if it's it not out there, there where, where does it go? How did it leave? Probably another animal. Okay. Um, I don't think that... To be honest with you, I don't think that uh, you found a dead raccoon in the house. Number one, because you already said that you found rats in the house, which I do not believe. Okay? Um, so if you got the rats out, why would you, what would make you look, and you said that was what was thinking. Yeah. Uh, and you said that the meat had maggots all in it and all that stuff. Yeah. But I can tell you that the garbage can does not smell anything like rotten meat was in there. That stuff smells horrible. Horrible. Yeah. I'm going to tell you right now, I cook a lot of stuff in my house. Okay, a lot of meat. That's all. And I eat a lot of food, as you can tell, right? I throw meat and bones in my, you know, I suppose to because if it's in, not in a bag, they don't like it. But I still do it. Okay, I don't follow all the rules and stuff. But I throw, I throw meat in my garbage can and it rots and all that. So it gets real disgusting, as you know. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, that smell does not go away. It doesn't just disappear unless you unless you clean it out with bleach and put special perfumes in there and all that stuff. But we had guys out there smell in that garbage can and didn't smell anything like rotten meat. That would lead me to believe that there was no rotten meat there. I threw it out in there. Okay. That, I swear. Would me, that would lead me to believe there's no rotten meat in there. But here's what I think, okay? I don't think you're a bad person, but I do think that you know where your where your dad is and where your daughter is. Okay, and if you love your daughter and your dad, I would think that you would be honest about it. I am honest. I don't know where they are at all. I don't. I, I'm going to tell you that when we find your dad and your daughter, okay, I could, I can assure you that we're going to know what happened to them. We're going to know how they got there. Is there going to be any evidence whatsoever to suggest that you had anything to do with her disappearance? No. I Nothing? Nothing. And she, no, I didn't, all I know Cheyenne, is that my dad Cheyenne, and my daughter Answer my question. Is there going to be any evidence that you had anything to do with their disappearance? I'm not calling you a bad person. No, my fingerprints are on their stuff because I always move their stuff in the house all the time. I mean, that's oh, cool, Dad. What's this? You know. I understand that. But is there going to be, I didn't ask you that. I asked you, is there going to be any evidence in your dad's truck that would lead us to his disappearance? No. That you moved... You have to understand what you're saying here. You're telling me that you the, that you don't even stop at your dad's house after he didn't even take you, you went by there. You the doctor's office. You are so concerned about your daughter that you don't make sure that she goes to the doctor. But you drive past your dad's house. He looks like he's there and he's fine and everything. But he didn't take her to the doctor. So why would you stop, Cheyenne? Why would you stop? I just didn't, I don't want to deal with, I didn't want to deal with my dad. But that's your daughter. You said you love your daughter with all your heart. Yeah. Mothers die for their kids. Yeah. And, and a bad relationship with your dad is not going to stop a mother from making sure her daughter gets the proper treatment that she needs, especially if she has problems. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you, if you made mistakes, fine, we can deal with them. But I need to know and what happened. And my mistake was not going... And actually knocking on the door. And That's not your only mistake, okay? That's not your only mistake. Leaving, leaving her with him. That's not your only No, you said you made it perfectly clear that your daughter's in a better place with your dad. Didn't yeah, you? but... You made it perfectly clear. Now that the detectives have gone on the offensive, 
Jessie is struggling to maintain her story. But that's the deal. But if I, if I would have just known that he's going to run off. Like and that. I know why, I'm going to tell you, Cheyenne, I know why you decided to uh, go get all these bug sprays and air fresheners, okay? It's not because dead rats were in there. Do you think the rats just happened to die there right when your dad left? Do you think your dad's going to be in the house with dead rats with your daughter? Does, doesn't your dad love your daughter? He made it perfectly clear, according to you, yeah. that he wanted to spend his last year of his life with his do- with his granddaughter. Yeah. Why would he have her walking around with dead rats in the house? That's because that's not what happened. That's not what happened. I know why you got the the bug killer and the cleaners, and I know that the house was cleaned up, and I know that your dad did not put those sheets on the couch. I know that. That's impossible. That's impossible. Because what's on that couch, if, if what's on that couch would have went through those sheets. So the sheets weren't just been, you, you know what you see what I'm saying? If yeah. What's on that couch, if your dad had sheets on there, if, if your dad had sheets on the couch and something happened, that's going to be on the sheets. Okay? I'm, I'm telling you right now, I just need you to be honest with me. I don't think you found a dead record. Okay? I really don't think that. I think you were probably near the under the house, but I think that you know where your dad and your daughter is. And if you say that you don't now, but we later on we show that you do know, that doesn't show any love whatsoever in my book, regardless of what happened. If you have no remorse whatsoever for anything to do with her disappearance, that makes you look bad. That makes you there are people will be like, she don't care about them. She doesn't love them. But people make mistakes all the time. And if you show remorse for that, then, you know, we can we can understand that. Okay? But I just need to know from you because it's going to look bad if something happened. That's what I'm saying. Oh, and, and you know we're talking to Cody and Cody's dad. Yeah. And I don't know what Cody's saying right now. I'm going to find out. But if he's telling a different story and your stories don't match, then I know you're lying. Okay? I just wanted you to be honest, and now's the time. Now's it because I don't want Cody telling on you for something and you taking some blame for something. But if he, I'm gonna tell you right now, husbands and wives, best friends, they do it all the time. They're not gonna get in trouble. They're gonna play, place blame on somebody else. And I think what he's gonna say, he's gonna tell us what happened, and he's gonna blame it on you. He's gonna say it was your idea because it's your kid. What happened? I left my daughter with my dad. Okay, I what happened? I know you left him with your dad. With your dad, what happened? I don't know. Cheyenne, I'm telling you. I did find rats there. Okay. I did get rid of them. You didn't find a raccoon, did you? There was a raccoon underneath there. But you didn't throw it in the woods, because there's no evidence of that. We have people there now. There's no evidence of that whatsoever. Zero. Zero. You didn't throw meat in the garbage can. Because there was no meat in the house that was rotting. Do you know how long it takes for the for meat to rot? Like know. that? I don't think not that long, I don't know. How long do you think? Um, I know we put some out in the trash can at our house and there were I'm not talking about the trash can. I'm talking about if I took oh, how big was the package of meat? It was about like this big. And what kind of meat was it? It was from Smith. What kind of meat was it? Ground beef. Okay. And that was in the, that was where in the sink? Yeah. Inside the house. Yeah, and it was like kind of like, like dark, dark color. Okay, but there wasn't maggots and stuff on it. It's impossible. What night was it that you found it? Wednesday night? Uh, Thursday. No, you said Wednesday. Yeah. You said Wednesday night after your after Cody yeah. after Cody told you that about the text messages supposedly, and I don't buy that either. He's not going to have text messages on his phone that your dad is leaving the state with your beloved daughter, okay, because he has a year to live, he's not going to tell you that because he forgets stuff? You don't forget stuff. That's significant. That's huge. That, that's huge. A man, your dad, okay, whether it be your dad or not, uh, your dad is taking your daughter out of the state because he's dying, according to him. And he's going to change phones and all this stuff, allegedly. And all this stuff. I don't even think your dad sent those text messages if they even exist. Did your did Cody delete them? No. 
Just do it on his phone. The detective picks apart everything Jesse has said, pointing out every inconsistency and wild claim. Jesse is unsure about how to counter his accusations, but stubbornly insists that she isn't lying. Move Stone Cody's phone. Here's what I'm going to see when, when I look at the phones. I can promise you this, okay? I can promise you if if they're on Cody's phone or whatever your dad, whatever text messages that or phone calls you made from your phone, if you really did to your dad, um, this is what we're going to see on the records. We're not going to see anything at all because they just didn't happen. Or we're going to see your dad's phone in the same place your phone is, in the same place Cody's phone is. That means that those phones are near each other and together. And the only way that it would be happening is if your dad was sitting next to you texting you or calling you, and people all do that, they turn and talk to them, right? Yeah, I mean, my dad, we actually, we sat in the same room with some good text messages. Okay, but these text messages are talking about going to Georgia and stuff, yeah. where it was not sent from the same room. That's why I was so, no, I'm wondering, what we're wondering is, is what happened, because we're going to be able to put all that together, okay? I'd rather not waste my time and find the daughter that you love, that it seems like I care more about right now, and I want to find your father, that it seems like I care more about more right now. I want to find them. I want to find them, too. I'm okay, but I need you to tell me the truth. You know what happened to them, and I need you to be honest with me. What happened? I don't know. Cheyenne, I'm telling you, you, you know that, here's what's to do with the meat, with the meat situation. It takes about two weeks, okay, for meat, like raw meat. I'm not talking about humans. It takes about two weeks for raw meat to get that way, okay? When you dropped your daughter off at your dad's house and you went inside and stuff, was there meat in the, in the, uh... Yeah, there's meat in the sink. There's meat in the sink, okay? Yeah, and he says, I don't know about this meat. It looks kind of gross. Okay, oh, so he left it there when he left? And he left dead rats on the floor when he left? Really? Come on, Cheyenne. Just be honest. Be honest. And I'm telling you right now, just be honest. Because if you're not honest, and we find out you had something to do with the disappearance with your father and your daughter, it's going to make you look like a horrible person. Do you think you're a horrible person? No. Yes or no? I feel like a horrible mother let my dad take Do you think that you're a horrible person in general? No, I do everything that I got, and I do everything by, like, I work hard, I try okay, well, to Well, then keep everything. doing it. Then keep doing it, being a good person, because right now you're not. Okay? If you if you do everything by the book and work hard and you're a great person and, you know, all that stuff, then do the right thing. I'm telling you what I remember and what I know. Okay, but you're not going to forget the disappearance of your mother, or excuse me, of your, fa your father and your daughter. How that happened. So I want you to tell me how it happened. All I know is that... And I know you didn't do it by yourself. Where are they? Let's just start with that. Just tell me where they're at. Because we're going to find them. I don't know. Just tell me where they're at, Cheyenne. I don't know. Honest to God, I don't well, know. Well, God's not here. Okay, right? Is God here? No. So don't oh, promise to God. God. God's I understand that, but he's not going to be able to tell me that you're telling the truth. I just want to know where they're at. I don't know where they are. I don't. Are they at the house? Is that what stinks? I don't see them at the house. I look through everywhere. Here's the deal. Something happened at the house. I, I know that. Okay? There's blood at the house. There's blood at the house. Okay? And I know you know what happened. I'm trying to find out from you. Did you, get, here's what, did you go in there and find some bad stuff and you were scared and you guys covered it up and did something with them? Just tell me that. They didn't, they didn't, they, nothing bad happened there and they got up and walked out of there on their own. So, I don't did you go I there? Don't remember. You don't remember if something bad happened there? All I know is that everything looks normal. Before. But it's not normal. Okay, the sheets that you guys put on those couches in the love seat is covering up stuff. Is covering up stuff that we saw that you know how it got there okay so if you go in and find some bad stuff in the house i can understand if you're scared and you want to hide stuff i understand that okay i also know that cleaning went on in the house not just bug spray you decided for some reason you all decided that you need to clean stuff up okay trust me i know this so what did where's your where's your dad going 
don't know. Cheyenne? I don't. I, I, don't, I, I, right I don't remember. I don't know where they are. They said they were leaving. So what, what's going to happen when we see your dad's phone communicating with your phone? What's going to happen when that call doesn't even exist on your phone on Monday when you said you tried to call him and he goes straight to voicemail after the, to make sure he took your daughter to, to, uh, to the doctor? What's going to happen when that call doesn't exist? What's going to happen if that call does exist, but it's in the same place as your phone or Kobe's phone? What's going to happen then? Because I'm not, it's going to look very, very troublesome, Cheyenne, if your phone is communicating with your dad's phone, but you guys are up in North Lakeland. Jesse isn't going to be able to explain about the cell phones, and both she and the detective know this. There are many holes in her story, but the cell phone records are going to be the easiest to disprove her version of events. I really don't think you're a bad person. I think you want to do the right thing and be honest. If you went in there and you saw some bad stuff. Yeah, I remember. Okay, but you're not going to forget that. So you need to remember where they're at so we can find them. At least, at least do that. At least tell us where they're at. Are they at the house, Cheyenne? Yes or no? I don't want to hear, I don't know. Are they at the house? Yes or no? Because it's either you, they are there or they're not there. And you know where they're at. Are they at the house? Yes or no? No. Where are they at? Cheyenne? You do they know. told me they were going towards you. That's, all That's not know. what happened because let me tell you right now. But if was in the house, Vicky was the last person to Vicky, see Vicky, we already we already could tell I can already tell you that Vicky had nothing to do with this. I know that I can prove that. Okay? My main concern right now is finding your dad and your daughter. And I don't want to mess with this all night. I just want to find them. Regardless of what happened, I want to find them. Okay, so it, it doesn't it makes you look like a horrible mother and person if you know where they're at, and we can prove that. And you you say you don't know. Mm -hmm. That that doesn't make you look like a good mother, a good loving mother that you do anything for your daughter, does it? If it is, then act like it. Don't protect anybody. This is your daughter. She's six years old, Cheyenne. She's six years old. She might have had some problems. Cheyenne, look at me. Look at me. Where, where are they at? Move your hand. Sit up. Sit up straight. Because I don't see one tear coming out of you. Okay? I don't see one tear. Yes, you do. Cheyenne, we, are, we already know enough. We have, we, we have enough information to know there's parts of your story that, that aren't true. You gotta answer our questions. This is this stuff we have to know. All right? For your daughter. For your daughter, we need to find her. I don't. You do know. Don't we, know. we have enough enough people in the neighborhood that know that you know. We didn't just talk to you, we talked to other folks in that neighborhood. You need to tell us what you know. You need to tell us where your where your daughter's at. There's no way your dad left there to leave for the rest of his life and left his wallet there and left his money in his wallet and left his car there. That just didn't happen. This stuff doesn't make, make sense, Jerry. And leave, he would leave your daughter's medication there? Really? Okay, I believe that that text may exist, but I don't think it came from your dad. So there's no reason why Cody would be taking your your, your dad landlord's phone. Um, I mean, look, look at sit up, Cheyenne, sit up. Okay, you guys, your dad's missing, and your daughter, your six year old daughter's missing. Okay, and you guys. Um, Go, or cleaning up the house, bombing the house, moving cars around, taking their truck, taking your dog, like they don't even exist. You know what that tells me? That tells me, and I've done this job a long time, this is not my first case, okay? That tells me that you know where they're at, and you know they're not coming back. 
I know, but that's what the text message said. That's what the text message said that either you or Cody sent to to Tonysville. Your dad didn't send that text message. Remember the phone records we're talking about? We have the phone records. Okay? So I know all that stuff you said is not true. It's impossible. So where are they at? I Cheyenne? Don't, I really don't yes, know. Yes, you do. Well, what happened to them? I don't know. Do you agree with me that a lot of stuff you said is not true? The detective presses Jesse for the truth, but all she has to offer are fake tears and the insistence that she doesn't know. Do you agree with me? I'm, I'm just going off of what I remember. Okay, but do you agree what with me? I'm not asking you what you remember. Do you agree with me that a lot of the stuff you told me is not true? Do, yeah. do you agree with me that the raccoon, you pulling it out, throwing it in, the, in the, the, the weeds right there, is not true? Is that true? Just let's start with that. I pulled it out a raccoon. Did I you tossed get, it. Where'd I, you toss it? I tossed it like that. Where did it go? I heard it hit the woods or, but, or trees or something. But would you agree with me that's not even true? That's what I hear. That's what I... No. S- would you agree? Isn't it true that you did not even pull a raccoon out of there? Is that true? Yeah, sit up, Cheyenne. Is that true, yes or no? Is it true that you pulled, let's just be Yes. Honest. That's true, that you pulled the raccoon out. Yes. And you threw it, not even that far, to get rid of the smell. Did that get rid of the smell? No, because yeah. it still stinks out there, right? Yeah. So, you tossing it five feet, how is that doing any good? You're going to go through the pain and labor of bending down, picking up a raccoon, and you're a woman, with some tongs that you say you get out of your dad's, uh, kitchen and throw the raccoon. How big were the tongs? What did it look like? I didn't use the tongs for the raccoon. You told me you did. I used that for the rats. You told me you used the tongs for the raccoons because I said you picked up the raccoon with your bare hands and you said no, I used tongs from my dad's kitchen. I used the, the pole thing to bring it out. And then how did you pick it up? I Sit up, Cheyenne. See what I'm saying? I'm not running. Shannon, I want you to sit up. Huh? My mind is... <laughs> All right, let's take this a look. I want you to sit up and look at me. Please? Can you do that for me? Let's just start here. Let's start fresh. Okay? Now, I'm going to start middle. Did you pull out a raccoon from under the house? Yes, sir. And why did you do that? I the stunk. Okay, and where did you throw it? I, I just threw it. I you just threw it where? Like, it, I, it sounded like it hit the woods. But do you remember telling me that you used tongs to take the raccoon because you said you weren't going to touch it? Do you remember yeah. saying that? Well, why did you say that? Because it's not true, right? Cheyenne? It's not true. See what I'm saying? Wouldn't it be a lot easier? I'm going by what my mind remembers. Okay, but your mind is not for, going to forget. Or, and I need you to sit up and look at me. That's what I need to go by. I need, your mind is not going to forget. Like, like for instance, all the stuff you told me about you and Cody's relationship, you don't forget that because you love that stuff. That's your love. On a scale of 1 to 10, you guys have a 10 relationship. But on your daughter's scale, you have like a 5. Yeah, I've been trying to work on it, but she doesn't seem like she wants to work on it. Clearly. But I'm. So I'm, where is she at? She's with my dad. Where? I believe she's probably with your dad, possibly. But where are they at? I don't know. Try it. The text. The, all I know is that the text messages say that he was. I forget the text messages, okay? Because I'm telling you, it did not come from your dad. It did not come from some guy riding on the road. It's not using your dad's phone. How would he even know to text me? Okay. How would he even know to call you? Okay. It did not come from Vicky because I can account every step of Vicky's way as verified by other means. Okay. So I need to know from you what's not verified. What we can't verify is, is from you is because everything you say. Not lying. You, you can say whatever you want, but if you're telling me that you're saying the truth, then. I can just tell you that you're not because we have we can prove otherwise. So if you're not telling the truth, that means you're trying to hide something. And if you're trying to hide something, I would say that makes you look like a bad mother. I just want to know where they're at. Let's just start there. 
I don't care what happened what happened to them disappearing. I want to know, let's start where are they at? Let's just start there. I don't know where they are. I don't. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave this room for a second with Detective Clark with you. And I'm going to go find out if Cody's story matches your story. Okay? Then I'm going to find out if he's told the truth. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What if he gives me a whole different story? Like, like he tells us where they're at. Well, because he knows where they're at, and you know where they're at. No, we don't. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. And this thirty thousand dollars, what did y'all do with that? I didn't do nothing with this money. Well, what did Cody do? With it? What did y'all do with it? What's that the storage unit? Nothing. Did you go to the bank for real? Yes, I did a bank to find my dad. You went in there. Yes. Okay. What did you do with the storage unit? Uh, the storage unit is still there, and I have my storage unit, and I'm trying to find my dad. What did you do there? What was your purpose of going there? Um, I went and got a bunch of old clothes that I can't wear no more. Out of storage? Yeah. For what? what I was just for? slowly get rid of my stuff. So when you went there the other day, you went and got your stuff out. Yeah. And what did you do with it? I donated it, it will. Okay, because you didn't tell me that earlier. You said you went there just to pay on it because yeah. you and your dad share. Jesse keeps throwing in new details in the hope that it will make her story sound better. All it does is add to the long list of inconsistencies. Share the contract, right? Yeah, we okay. know she doesn't say that. But you didn't tell me that earlier. Okay. And, and once again, your dad's missing and your six year old daughter's missing. Okay? And you're out. Oh, let me take these clothes out and take them to Goodwill. Not, oh my God, where's my six-year-old daughter? That doesn't have her medication. You see what I'm saying? So that leads me to believe again. That leads me to know that you know where they're at. No, I don't know where they are. And when, I don't. when we find them, I want you to sit up, please. Can you sit up for me? I need to communicate with you, okay? I need to communicate with you. You putting your head down on all that stuff is not going to help anything. It's not going to help you. Is that going to help you tell the truth? I'm trying to remember, and that's all I remember. That's all that's in my head that I remember. You don't remember where your mom, where your your dad and your daughter is? All I know is that they went to Georgia. They did not go to Georgia. Okay, I know, but you said there's blood in the house. There is. And you know the blood's there. You knew the blood was there when you were at the house. You knew it before the police got there. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Where are they? I don't know. All I know is that when I take my medicine, I pass out, and I don't remember what happens to what happened during the time that I'm. So when did you pass out, out in the last week? I I passed out. I've been passing out a lot when really? I take my medicine. You passed out. I don't believe that. Okay. No. You never lied. You haven't lied to me one time. I'm telling you what I remember. Have you lied to me one time? No. Cheyenne. There is no raccoon. Okay, I know that. There was never a raccoon gathering in there and that that thrown in the woods or by the woods. Okay? So if you're lying about that, what else are you lying about? You was it I'm gonna ask you again, was there a raccoon dead or not? Just how hard is yes, that? Yes, there was. There was a dead raccoon in there. Yes. And you picked it up with what? I Pulled it out with the long thing. I don't it's know what it's called. It's got a saw on the end of it? Yeah. Like and then how did you pick it up with that? And then I used tongs for it. But you said you used tongs for the for the rats. Yeah. And then you said, oh, I didn't use the tongs for the raccoon. You see what I'm saying? And it's not hard. It's not hard. I mean, what's what's hard for you is that you're not, you're not remembering the lies that you told. Okay? And if... If you're messing up little stuff, you're messing up big stuff, all right? So, I'm going to start again. Where Did you pick the raccoon up or not? Yes. How did you pick him up? With tongs. And you're telling me tongs now because you know you can't pick it up with the pole saw. It's impossible. The pole saw is not like this. It's a saw. A long saw and extends out and it has a saw on the end of it. It's yeah. a long pole. So, you and I both know you can't pick up a raccoon with that because the saw is wobbling. Right? Do you agree with me that you can't pick it up with the saw? Right. So you didn't pick it up with the saw. And you didn't pick it up with the tongs because why? I picked it up with the tongs. I had tongs in my hand. 
They look like tongs. They what? like they got Where'd you get from? The kitchen. So was it tongs or not? Or it yeah. just looked like tongs? They I call them tongs. So how long, like, long were they? They're like this long. You picked up a raccoon with tongs that long. Was it a baby? No, it was, I just picked it up by its hind legs. I mean, it, as long as you don't touch the, it, it, you can do, the, you can throw it. Why did you throw the rats in the woods? You threw them in a trash can? Really? Look, I know why the, the bombs are there. I know why the fresheners are there. It has nothing to do with rotten meat, which you failed to tell me until I asked, because I already knew about the rotten meat story, which is a fib, a lie, not the truth. Um... It has nothing, those bombs and all that have nothing, zero, to do with me, dead rats, and a raccoon. You understand me? Yeah. You understand? Are we on the same page? And I'm right. I know I'm right. I know I'm right. I'm just going by what I remember. Well, so is it possible that's not true then? Because you could have blacked out? Maybe, I don't know. This is what I remember. Okay, but where do you remember your dad and your daughter being? I left them at the house and I went to pick Cody up. And then my days at work was all jumbled and everything. And I remember doing all that stuff. And that's all I remember. And Why is your dad's up. truck up at your house? So I wanted to make sure it stayed safe. So you can come back. you sure your dad and daughter were safe? I just want to call family to see if you no, need. You should call the police. No, I waited. You had to get a phone number from somebody for the police station. Have you heard of nine one one? Have you heard of that? Just tell me you've heard of that. Yeah, I've heard of nine one one. Okay, heard of nine one one. So why did you call nine one one? Is it an emergency? Well, yeah, but it's like. Is I, it an emergency? Your daughter is gone with your dad. Disappeared with no medication. Is that emergency? Please tell me yes. Yeah. Do you think it's an emergency? Yeah, I just wasn't thinking. You I weren't was, thinking. Because I, I was just, I was freaking out, like, why would he leave? He didn't leave. I know, because he said there's blood in the house. Well, what does that mean? I mean, somebody did something to my daddy. Okay, so I don't what know happened? who. So what happened? Whenever Jessie wants to sound like a caring daughter, she refers to her father as daddy. But the detectives don't buy into the emotional manipulation. I don't know. I came home to the house and it just looked like it is. You didn't see you didn't see blood anywhere. No. And them sheets were already there. I I can promise you, your dad didn't put those sheets there. Well, then who did? You did. No, I didn't. You did. You were there when they were put there. If you would have, if you would just choose to tell the truth, I'm telling you. It would be a lot easier to tell me the story. Because you and I, Shalane, you and I both know that we're going to find that. And we're going to be able to show that you had something to do with their disappearance. Okay? Evidence does not lie. They have no reason to lie. Evidence is not a person. Evidence tells you one thing, and that's the truth. That's what's great about it. All right? But here we have a grieving mother who is lying about where her daughter is. So therefore, you're not grieving. Yes, you are. You and I both know that you're lying. I'm you, I'm no, you're not. And I want you to sit up and look at me, please. Because that's not working, all right? That this little show is not working. Not you're not crying. There's not one tear. Your daughter is missing. I tell you, there's blood now. She doesn't have the medications, and you not one tear is falling from your face. So don't try to make them come out now. But I am crying. I just can't. It's not, I'm dehydrated. You, just do you want more water? Yes. Well, drink that out. I'm trying to talk to you. And I'm telling what I remember. No, you don't. Cody's seen me black out before. Great. That's great. But that has nothing to do with your daughter and your father being missing. Okay? Nothing. Zero. 
Did you black out when you went to the school gym? Yes or no? That was long ago. Cody asked me what's wrong. Oh my God, what's wrong with you? Did you black out when you went to the store gym? Yes or no? Yes. You blacked out. Why did you tell me that? Did you black out when you went to the bank? No. Did you black out when you found out your daughter ain't good or drugs? Yeah. You blacked out then. Yeah, but um, and, you know, my friend goes, what's the matter? I said, who, who said that? Who said that? One of the girls. What's her name? Um. Hey, come on. What's her name? What's her name? Black girl. What's work. her name? Shaniqua. Shaniqua, what's her name? She, she calls her Shaniqua. I can't pronounce her name. What, so she is, is she a, uh. Heavy set black girl with laughing. And she asked you, are you okay? And you said you blacked out? I didn't tell her black girl because I just felt But she I asked you if you were okay. Yeah. Why did she ask you that? I believe I was in shock. You look like you're in shock because you found out your daughter didn't go to an appointment? Yeah. Okay. You were in such shock that your daughter didn't go to an appointment. You say you called your dad one time and it went to voicemail. And you said you were and you just said you were in such shock that you drove past their house that you didn't even stop to find out why your daughter didn't go to an appointment. That's how shocked you were. No I'm going to go right now to find Shaniqua or whatever her name is and wake her up in the middle of the night to ask her if she remembers on Monday. I've talked to a bunch of people at work. About so it may not have been Shaniqua? I talked to her. I talked to her. But she her. asked you if you were okay. And I said, no, I guess I'm missing. She, she you told her that on Monday? No. <laughs> you told her, so you knew Monday your kid was missing. No, I told her. Yes, you did, because you had something to do with it. Jesse keeps messing up her timeline, and the detective is always quick to point it out. Jesse makes feeble attempts to blame the discrepancies on blackouts, but it doesn't make her look any less guilty. So I'm going to go find Shaniqua, and I'm going to ask her on Monday, did you ask Cheyenne if she was okay for some reason? And you know what she's going to tell me? She's going to tell me, what are you talking about? Just like Vicky's told us, um, I didn't say anything about taxi. What are you talking about? Uh, uh, what are you talking about? We talked to Vicky. Obviously. She told me that my dad She was... didn't say any of that. Stop. That's what she told me. She did not say anything of that. That's all I'm asking you to do. I'm telling you. You did not black out of the storage unit. You didn't briefly black out at Lowe's whenever you found out your daughter didn't go to the doctor. You know why I know that? Because you weren't you weren't concerned about it, or you would have stopped at your house, at your dad's house and said, hey, whether or not your dad had a good relationship or not, you're going to say, hey, why didn't y'all go to the doctor? Did you black out when you were cleaning the house? What old you clean in the house? What old you scrub? I don't remember scrubbing anything. I don't remember scrubbing anything. Well, who did all the cleaning? My dad does cleaning in the house. Your dad does scrubbing the floors and all that? Your dad does it? Yeah, he mops his house all the time. He scrubs his floors and all that? Yeah. He does? Yeah. How often does he do that? Not once every time. How do you know? You don't even there. So I asked him. You asked him, you, you scrub your floors? You asked him that. Yeah, because I tell him, like, it looks like you got a dog hair right there piled up in your bedroom again. The monkey laying. So, but he scrubs his floors about once a week. Yeah. Okay. But he's going to leave dead rats in the kitchen floor? Really? Come on. Come on. Prove to me you're a half decent mother. I'm Tell sorry. me the truth, Cheyenne. Tell me the truth. What happened? I'm telling you the truth. Cheyenne. I don't remember. All I know is that I seen the text message. It just said. Whether it was a text message or not, I'm telling you, you know it, I know it did not come from your dad. If your dad's phone, but did not come from your dad. So if some other mystery person 
have your dad's phone. How are they going to know to text Cody or you specific information? They're not going to know. On my dad's phone, where he's listed underneath Cody, Shy and Shy is Cody. Okay. And shy and who's Shy? Me. I know that's you, right? Yeah. How is some stranger going to know that? How is some stranger going to know who Shy is? Tell me, how some stranger going to know who Shy is? They're not, right? They're not going to know who Shy is. And they're not going to know to text Shy's Cody some specific information about going to Georgia. They're not going to know that, right? Don't you think that's impossible? I text him, I love you, Dad, all the time my, from Cody's phone. What happened? I don't know. I don't know. I'm telling you, I don't fucking know. Why are you sorry. cursing at me? I'm not cursing at you. I'm just a man concerned about your daughter. And you keep lying about stuff. So you have zero concern about your daughter. Do you? I'm very concerned about her. Then look at me. Be honest. If you're concerned about her, be honest. Just be I'm honest. Anymore. That's all I'm asking. You're not being honest. You're not even crying. Prove to me that you care. Maybe you're dehydrated, but you've been drinking water. I don't, I don't understand. So prove to me that you're halfway decent mother and tell me the truth because this is not going away, okay? This is not going away. We'll be parts of your story, and there's parts of this whole thing that's not adding up. I'll take the blue bolts right here. You're not being truthful. You know it, and we know. It. So, no, you're, but, but you're not. You're not telling the truth. The detectives split up to use the classic good cop, bad cop technique. The second detective takes a slightly softer approach, so that Jesse will be more likely to open up. Listen, you know it, and we know. It. Here's how I know, because you're not concerned. Like, let it hear me out. Like he said, you're not crying. You went to your dad's house on the 22nd because you thought he took your daughter out of state. You didn't bother calling the sheriff's office so we can go look for your daughter. That means you're not concerned. Then you went to a storage unit to remove your personal property so you can go sell it or get rid of it or donate it or we work. And again, you didn't call the sheriff's office. And then that weekend, you went and hung out with one of your friends for Saturday and Sunday. Had a good time and hung out. Never called the sheriff's office. All right? A week goes by. You never call the sheriff's office. You never tell us that you're concerned. Your dad's gone. Your daughter's gone. You can't get a hold of them. Now, almost another week's gone by. And you finally call. All right? You were so concerned on the first day that you, he was gone that you went down there in the evening after everybody had worked, packed up the dog to make sure the dog's all right. But you didn't take any, any precautions to call it. Mr. Cheyenne, next question. Why did you ask Cody at Walmart if if he thinks the body would fit in 55 pound ground? Why did you ask him? I don't, I didn't ask him. You didn't ask him that? No. Did you ask him about maggots? No. You didn't ask him that? No. He's lying. I don't remember. He's lying? Did you go in the bathroom at the house? Where did the shovel come from? Where was that? There's a shovel outside. Why was there a shovel in the bathroom? Giant, why was there a shovel in the bathroom? This time you give me for now. Why was there a shovel in the bathroom? 
There's a show outside. There's not a show on the laptop. Is that so, is it outside now? Yeah, that's where it's been. Why was there a show on the laptop? Don't look over there. Look at me. Why is there a show on the laptop? Why would you ask Cody to get a body fit of 55 pounds wrong? Really? Really? I couldn't even make that up. Why is there why was there a show in the bathroom? Mm -hmm. Why was there a show in the bathroom? I don't know. There was a one when I went in there. Cheyenne, why bathroom. was there a shovel in the bathroom? There was not a shovel in the bathroom. Yes, there was. Did you mess with the shovel outside? There's a shovel outside. What did you do with it? There's a shovel right outside the back door. What did you do with it? Nothing. Why'd you notice that? Because that's where Daddy keeps all his stuff. Like, I, I noticed everything on the shovel. What did you do with the shovel? Nothing. Did, did Cody tell the truth now? Because I know the answer to this. Did Cody give you an ultimatum? You know what that means? Did Cody, you know what the ultimatum means? Yeah. What does it mean? Like, yeah, the cheeses are this. Did he give you that about your daughter? Did he say you need to tighten up with your daughter or else? Did he tell you that? Yeah. And why did he tell you that? Because she needed help and we needed to figure out what's wrong with her. So he told us that. But he told you he gave you an ultimatum because he can't deal with it. He said you better tighten up or he's gone, right? Yeah. So he told us that. He also told us that you asked about the 55-gallon drum. Monroe was tired of trying to deal with Meredith and was ready to walk away from the relationship if something wasn't done. This sent Jesse into a panic and is the main reason she sent Meredith to stay with her father. What Jesse also leaves out is the fact that she was looking up how to put Meredith up for adoption. So why would he tell us that and lie about that? Why did you ask him that? Why did you ask him that? I didn't have to Why did you ask him that? I asked him to have a Christmas tree, a big Christmas tree to fit in there because we have a seven foot Christmas tree in the storage unit. To fit in where? Into the big tote. What tote? The tote at Walmart. You bought a tote at Walmart? No. I bought, well yeah, I bought a tote at Walmart, but it's for the picture of and it's a little blue one, it's inside the camper. Okay. But I didn't buy that big one. I was Why did you ask him that? If a person will fit in there. You didn't say anything about a Christmas tree. Because if you did, if you were asking about a Christmas tree, you already got it out of storage and you went there. Did you get it? No, but okay. it's very. So then why are you even worried? Why would you even ask him that? It's in storage. What were you going to do with it? Why did you ask him if a body would fit in the barrel? Why did you ask him that? I don't remember asking him that. I don't remember asking him that at all. Could you have asked him that? I don't know. Probably. What's up with the shovel? There was just shovel outside the house. And Why was it just that thing? I don't know. Did you wash it off? No. Have you ever touched the shovel? And I helped dig crap out of the dog's pen with it. To clean her pen up where she ain't stepping in it. Why did you put it in the bathroom? I know you put it in the bathroom. I just wonder why. Why would someone put a shovel in the bathtub? I want to know why the shovel was in the bathtub. I'm telling you. I want to know, know why the shovel was in the bathtub. And I want you to tell me the truth. I'm telling you. Let's just start know. with that. You don't know. Tell me the truth. This is what I remember. What do you remember? I got a shovel outside. I didn't see. I've seen there's rust in the bathtub. Because the shovel was in there. Why was it? Well, there's always been rust in that bathtub. Why was the shovel in the bathtub? I didn't see no shovel in no bathtub. 
why was the Shabbat moment after? I didn't see no shovel in the bathtub. Why was the shovel in the bathtub? So you yeah. asked Cody about a Christmas tree? Really? He didn't tell us about a Christmas tree. He said a person. A Christmas tree buried in a storage unit in July doesn't make any sense. Nobody pulls a Christmas tree out of July. I was taking things out of that storage unit and put it in one. No, but that has no, let's just stop with that. Okay. Why did you ask him about a person? No Christmas tree. He would have told us a Christmas tree. Why would he say a person? Why? We watch a lot of film online shows. So you asked him that? What did you ask him? Tell me exactly what you asked him. I must even mention what he said. <clears throat> what all can you put in that tote? Like Christmas tree and you didn't ask about the Christmas tree. You and I both didn't ask about the Christmas tree. Why did you ask about a person? Okay. Cheyenne. It's time. That's all I remember. That's all I'm, I remember in my brain. No. Why did you ask about a person? Jesse is unable to come up with a good enough lie to satisfy the detectives and once again falls back on the excuse that she is only telling them what she remembers. You know you asked about a person because you just said, oh, we watched a lot of criminal minds. Why did you ask about a person? You know, too? Would it fit to? I don't remember. Yes, you do. You just don't want to say it. Why did you ask that? I see on criminal lines. What did you see on criminal lines? A big old tote and a Christmas tree in it. And okay, so if you saw a Christmas tree and a tote. Inside of a toad on a TV show, why would you, why would you have to ask them if it fit if you already saw it? I was talking about my seven foot Christmas tree. Would fit in what toad? In the big toad because it's a big tree. Where, when did you get the toad? I didn't buy it. I didn't buy that toad. I bought a little small toad that I put picture albums in. What toad are you talking about putting in the Christmas, put the Christmas tree? That was a big toad that they, I seen at Walmart. Oh, you saw it and they said, hey, well, a Christmas tree fit in there and a person? I'm just trying to get an idea. I know, but tell me exactly what you asked. Him. Tell me exactly what you asked. Him. All I remember was talking about Christmas tree. That's all I remember about. I don't remember about nobody. You didn't ask him what person fit in there? No, I don't remember that. Is he making that up? He didn't make up the part that he gave me an ultimatum. You never told us that. Did you ever tell us that he gave you an ultimatum? Or did I have to go find it out myself? Did you tell us that? Just tell me yes or no. It slipped my mind, okay? Okay. I think I'm trying to remember. It's hard for me to remember this. No, it's not. I don't know why. Look at me. I can't even remember some things that I do day to day. But he told us that he gave me an ultimatum, and that's true, isn't it? Yes. Okay. He told us that you asked about putting a body in the toe or a drum or whatever. Is that true? Or is that just, just, just that part of the line? That's true, isn't it? No. That's not true. I don't remember ever saying anything about a body in the toe. Did Cody ever see a shovel in the, in the tub and tell you about it? No, I don't remember. Is that something else he going to tell you? I don't remember that. Why was the shovel in the bathtub? There was a shovel outside. I didn't see no bathtub shovel. Why was the shovel ever in the bathtub? The shovel shouldn't be in the bathtub. I, I know. That's why I'm asking you. Dad was washing crap off of it. From Say again? No, his daddy was washing crap off no, of it. No, not your dad. You. No. Why did you ask Cody 
without a person being in the table. You guys said, oh, criminal minds. I said on criminal lines, but someone put a body in a tote. Okay, so why did you, so is that what you asked them? Will a body fit in a tote? And nothing to do with the Christmas tree. No, I don't remember. Yes, you do. You're just choosing not to tell. I don't remember, like... You were going to your stores and you'd take out clothes and also take out Goodwill. Why didn't you take the Christmas tree? And it was buried underneath a bunch of boxes. And... So did you get a tote at Walmart? Yeah, I bought a little blue tote. How big is it, Joey? About like 18 gallons to fit the picture I was in. That's what's inside of it. What else did you have Walmart? Um... We're gonna find out some of the house. Okay, when did you get off? Like, the night I picked Cody up from work. The morning? The night I dropped Cody off at work. The night you dropped off there? Yeah. So you went in there and bought one? I bought the tote for the picture frames and some air fresheners. For what? For the camper, because it stinks too. Okay, what kind of air fresheners? The little pop up ones. That what else did you buy? And some air fresheners to uh, to spray the bedroom. What bedroom? My and Cody's bedroom. The fifth room? Yeah. That's the bedroom? Yeah. Okay. It's we call it upstairs because it's the Where did you buy the, the spray spray ones that are at the house? Your dad's house. My dog. With the red with the uh, bombs? Yeah, to kill the roaches and stuff and Jesse's memory makes a miraculous recovery when she lists off the various air fresheners and other supplies she bought. The detective is growing tired of her using the excuse of not remembering whenever he asks her a question where the answer could incriminate her. Did Cody see the dead rats? No. He came to the house and didn't see the dead rats? No. Go ahead and clean them all. Did you tell him that? Yeah. What other raccoon? Um... I told him about the raccoon too. He didn't see you like go around the side and all that? Yeah. And did you see the raccoon? He said, what are you doing? I said, I'm getting a raccoon from underneath the house. And you know what he said? He said, that's not what happened. Because he never saw it. So what were you doing over there? You trying to hide something better? No. What are you going to tell the truth, Sean? I'm going to tell the truth. Why was there a shovel in the bathtub? There was no shovel in the bathtub. It was outside. Okay. Let's go again. Let's call the water. Shine. Okay. I'm going to go to the ship. What? I don't do nothing. Shine. What are you saying? Why are you guys trying to, like, put words in our mouths that we didn't say. That's not what's happening. <laughs> Take a new bullet is coming here and asking you questions based on what Matt said or Cody. He told you we're gonna to talk to everybody. The stories don't match up. We know somebody's lying, right? Where's your dog? Where's your dog? Well, it's not as in my dad. It's all Where? Where? It's, they were in the house in the room. We were in the house. Yeah, they were sitting in the living room. In what condition? And I was talking to them when I left. Were they talking back? Yeah. Shine. Tell me the truth. That's what I remember. I think that's all I remember. Listen, listen. We both know that's not the truth. Alright. 
supplies and all this other stuff and you went hanging out with your friends and you did all this stuff and you were so concerned that you went to the bank but you never called us. It's time just to be true. You've been living this way for two weeks. Tell us the truth. Oh, hey. Listen, listen. The last two weeks have sucked pretty bad, huh? You guys don't know where they are. No, not because you don't know where they are. Because you live on a lot. You're living a lie. Okay. It's time for that lie to end. It's time for you to help us find Mary. Listen. It's time. I know. I don't know. Sure. I really, I don't know. Honest to God, I don't know. Quit holding your face down in your hands. Look. No, no. I've heard so much over the past few days. I no, that, that's not the case. After multiple protestations about knowing where her family is, the detective confronts Jessie about the fact that she has no tears while she sits there and pretends to cry. She's upset but it does not stem from concern about her daughter. She is worried that they are going to find out what she has done. Just tell us the truth. Don't, don't, don't say that's all I can remember because that's not. You remember exactly what happened. You just don't want to say. I think, I think it's easier for you to lie to us than tell us the truth. Because I think it's difficult for you to say. Just tell us the truth. I know it's hard. I know it's going to be real tough to tell you the truth. But I know you want to. I don't think you're a bad person. Yeah. I know it's going to be tough to tell me the truth. I always had to defend myself for my daddy. What's that? I always had to defend myself for my daddy, so I told him when I left. Take care of my daughter because I, I can't take care of her no more. You had to defend yourself from your dad? A lot of times. What like, does that mean? Like, my dad used to go, like, he hit me so hard I couldn't hear in my ear when he kicked down the door when I was little. Is that what happened? Yeah, honestly, God, like, my ex boyfriend could tell you, but I don't have his phone number anymore. Did that happen recently? That happened when I was 17. Did it happen recently? My were, dad, were you defending yourself? My dad's always gotten angry at me and yelled and like gets in my face and he punches the wall and stuff. And I've always had to cower in the corner. Did he yell at you when you dropped my Yeah. So tell me, tell me what happened. If you had to defend yourself from your dad since you're a kid, tell me what happened. I always had to like, I try to take him away when he runs away from me. He leaves me alone. So if you've had to defend yourself every time he yells at you because he's been abusive. Is that what you said? Yeah. So was he abusive when you dropped Meredith off? Or yeah. just verbally? Yeah, just verbally and then he punches and throws things. And he said that you're a horrible mom for just dropping your kid off and leaving. Like your mother. You're just like your mother. You drop your kid off and you leave her. And I'm like, now I ask you to take her for me. Did you feel you had to defend yourself then? I always have to defend myself when I'm around my daddy. Always. Always? Yeah. Even then? 
every day I talk to my dad. I have to defend myself. He's always calling my mother, or he's always uh, getting on to me, telling me how worthless I am and everything. So what did he say when you dropped Meredith off? He said that he, I'll take care of her, and don't you worry about it. And I'll do this and this and this and a lot of things I just kind of blocked in my head because I just, my dad is yelling at me again. He yells at me all the time. Even when I'm just, like, I uh, just get onto her for, hey, stop that, you're, you know. Oh, you're getting onto her again. You're going to, you know, wind up like your mother. No, I'm not like my mother. I'm not like my mom. And I love them. And I'm not, I'm not freaking lying. You're not lying about what? Anything. I don't remember things. I have a horrible memory. I, I try to remember as much as I can, but that's, like, my mind just doesn't let me remember. I've been hit so much, like, I don't remember things. Like, I'll be driving down the road and I'll black out. And I see now I'm in another lane and I'm like, oh crap. Cody asked me, what, what's wrong with you when I'm driving? And they're like, hey, you're going another lane. And it's just like, it's not bad. But like, I go into a daze because I don't know. Like, I just start. I feel so worthless with my dad around. He always calls me that. He always, like, threatens to, like, he says one day I'll, I'll find out that you're an unfit mother, that like you can't take care of her, and if you ever go to sign her away, I'll take her from you, and you'll never get her back. When did he tell you that? He told me that, like, last time, the first time she got vapor acting. And then I, and then he just, he, uh, I, I confronted him about everything, and then, he said, oh, I was just mad and stuff like that. And I'm like, but it didn't seem like you were, like, mad and stuff. Like, my dad's actually, like... Well, didn't you tell him that you were thinking about signing your rights over to somebody that could take care of her? Yeah. And that's when he said, well, yep, you're definitely like your mama then. Do you want to just pass your kid off on to somebody else? Hey, why, why have you been carrying your, your gun over there? Because I, I don't like it being at the house whenever I'm um, with Meredith at my house, so I leave it with him, where it's like totally with away from her. With who? With my daddy. Tony? Okay. But where's that at? It's at the trailer. When did you get that from the gun? She has never mentioned this particular gun, but given her rather selective memory, the detectives don't seem surprised. When I went down my daughter, you didn't tell us about you picked up a gun. That gun, you told us about the rifles. Yeah. I did it then too. Like why did you ask why did you ask Cody how long it would take for magnets to be in a body? I don't remember asking that. I don't remember asking that. And both of you guys saw the shovel in the tub. And you took it out right away when y'all saw it. So why was it unwilling to show on top? I don't remember that. I just remember the show was outside. I, I, I don't remember. You know what you don't remember, Cheyenne? You don't remember things that don't look good. So when you when you got this raccoon, look at me, Cheyenne, please. When you got this raccoon from under the house, Cody wasn't even there. You told him about it later, right? You told well, him. Well, my days and move with jumble together. Okay, but was Cody there when you, when you moved this raccoon, or did you just tell him later? I don't remember. I think he was at the house when I told him about it. 
I don't remember. I, I all my stuff that I do, I just I everything's like my days just run together now. I don't I don't sleep at night hardly because I'm laying down in bed and I, I'm trying to find out where I'm texting family to find out and then I just pass out and I wake up and I fall asleep and I wake up and I fall asleep and I wake up and I I, I haven't been sleeping good in the past three months. My boss actually asked me what's wrong with you. I said I was just so tired. So. Shine. Shine. This isn't going well. I don't know what happened. It's going to be tough, to, to be honest. Oh, it's going to be tough. I know it's okay anyway, but Daddy does attack me. I do black out. I do. Cause I don't remember parts of times. And it's like one time it's one o'clock, next time it's like three o'clock. So that happen? It happens a lot. I, it's been happening a lot lately. So what happened to your dad? I don't remember That's the problem. I don't remember. I just remember leaving the house and he was okay. I, was, I talked to him and I don't remember. I don't remember at all. Just be honest. No stuff. I can't remember. I just remember like, yelling at my dad and I left. You were yelling at me, you left? What yeah. day? What day was that? It was Saturday. Was it Saturday? Yes. Could have been another day. No, it had been Saturday, cause. So when you're yelling, at him, what happened? I just. Uh, well, be honest with China. I told him I'm not. I'm all. I'm not. Trying to get rid of my kid. I'm so just trying to you, find her. Does it make you mad when he calls your mom? Yes. I'm not my mom. So I graduated high school. I don't do drugs. I just do what the doctor gives me. So shy. Look. It's no wonder that Jessie takes it as a grave insult to be compared to her mother. While living with her, Jessie was abused and neglected to a horrible extent and could barely walk. Social services eventually removed her from her mother's care and placed her with her father. So what happened to your dad when you were yelling at him? I just remember yelling at him and he came at me and that's all I remember. At his house? Yeah, I remember hearing door, the, like a boom. And then what happened? I don't remember. I was, at, I was yelling as I was walking out the door. That's all I remember. Oh. You know what happened? I know it's tough. Okay. I, I can't remember.
I'm going to tell you something, okay? I want you to listen up. It's very important. Okay? You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. You have the right to talk to a lawyer before and during any questioning. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you before any questioning if you wish. You can decide at any time to exercise these rights and not answer any questions or make any statements. Do you understand each of your rights? Yeah. you understand that? Are you comfortable still answering questions? I didn't do nothing. But do you understand your rights? Yes. Okay. Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? Yes or no? It's about Vicky. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, about Vicky, yeah. I'm sorry? Yes, yeah, about Vicky. Okay. Are you in, you have her stored in your phone? Yeah. Okay. Um, do you know her phone number by heart? No. Are you able to read? Do you read? No. Okay. Jesse is torn. She clearly doesn't want to answer more questions, but knows that it will make her look guilty if she doesn't. Once she hears that it is about someone else, some of her reluctance fades. I'm going to tell you what she tells tells you on a text message. Okay. Um, on July 26th, she asked you, "Hey, shy, has your dad has your dad got home yet? Do you remember that text? Yeah. Do you remember what you told her? Um, no." You said, not yet. I talked to one of my family members, and he's doing okay up there. What does that mean? I thought he didn't get it. I thought no one knew where he was. When I reworded the question to the family member, then they go, no, that was like a while back he was up here. Really? I ain't done nothing wrong. Well, you're clearly lying to Vicky for to make her think your dad's in Georgia and everything's okay, right? No, I talked to one of my family members and he's doing okay up there. So where's he at? Cheyenne, where's your dad at? Yes, you do. Can you please look at me? Where's your dad? I don't know. Where's your daughter? Where's my dad? Here's what happened. <clears throat> you love Cody so much, right? You want to marry him, right? Yeah. Is he the love of your life? Yeah. I hope so. If you want to marry him. Okay? This man you do not want to lose, right? You even said your dad said you finally got a good man, right? Yeah. So you're proud of that. Yeah. You don't want to lose him, right? No. But he threatened you that you're going to lose him if you don't do something about your daughter. Right? It's only by herself. No. He, he said, you better take care of the situation. You couldn't control it. You couldn't control it. You couldn't. And you were afraid of losing Cody, so you took care of him. And you're trying to make people think that your dad and your daughter are still alive by telling these fibs. Oh, I have heard from my dad that I call people, I call, uh, talk to one of my family members and he's doing okay up there. There's no confusion about that. That's very clear what's going on. Okay? Where is your dad and your daughter? What did you do with them? I don't know where they are. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Did you, when you got there, did he get out of control and your dad came at you or something? You had to defend yourself with your gun? Is that, I can understand that. I can understand that. I, I just can't remember. But what happened? Do you, you remember all these times that your dad comes at you and hits you and belittles you, but you don't remember that day you dropped your daughter off? No, I don't remember. Like, it's like they came a different person. Like, I blacked out. And, and what happened when you blacked out? You eventually woke up because you cleaned up. So what happened? And you may, it may have been because you're mad, your dad came at you and stuff went wrong, okay? I can understand all that, but we still need to find them. Isn't that important? 
Isn't it that important? All I want to know from you, Sharon, is where are they? You do know. I don't remember. Okay, but what happened when you got there? Did your dad get mad at you and come at you? Yes. Okay, so what did you do in, in return? You said you have to defend yourself. What did you do? I hit him. With what? My hand, and I punched him. And then and what? He got pissed at me, and I was on the floor, and I don't remember. And then you killed him. In self-defense. Did you kill him in self-defense, or did you do it because you hit him? I don't remember. That's the. Thing. Yes, you do. You did it in self-defense, right? My dad. He. This is a grown man. Can you beat your dad up? No. Okay, so you're a girl, right? Just tell me what happened. I I know. So tell me what you had to do. Tell me what you had to do. What did you have to do? I don't know. I blacked out. But when you came to, what was going on? Where were you? I was in my car. And what happened at the house? Uh, Yeah, I remember. What did you you do to your dad? Where did you take your dad? I don't remember. Is he under the house? No. Is he under the house? No, sir. Where's he under the house? I don't Is he in the woods? Where's your daughter at? I don't know. Where's your, what did you do with her? Did you hide her? I met my dad, pushed my daughter really hard away from me because she was trying to break the roof and break me. What happened when you he pushed your daughter? Where'd she fly into? She fell into She fell into the knife that he had that he always carries. She fell into the knife? Yeah. He had it he had the knife in his hand? Meredith's death was no accident. Not only had she been shot in the head, but she was stabbed in the back of the neck multiple times. Yeah. Did that did that hurt her? I don't know. I don't remember. Well, she fell into it. Like, where did it hit her at? In her neck. The, the knife hit her in her neck. Okay. And then, I don't know if it was like my neck or what. Did she I blood? I don't remember that. I don't remember. I just remember I blacked out. And did I, she, yeah, but did she start screaming? You have to remember that. You remember. I heard her scream, yeah. Okay. And what did you do? Mommy. So did you, did you try to get your dad off of her or what? What did you do next? What happened next? I don't remember. I just remember that my daddy was on me. Okay. And how did you get him off you? Did you have to stab him? I pushed him. I don't know. I just I did something. That was, that's all I remember. And then I blacked out. Okay. But you didn't black out all the way. You remember some stuff. Because you remember your daughter falling in your dad's knife. How was your dad holding the knife? He's going like this, and I was putting it like away. If you're saying that this is a self-defense issue, okay. If that's what you're saying, okay. But just tell me the whole story so I can understand it. Tell me the whole story, and I can understand. So I understand. If you're saying it's self-defense, tell me the whole story that makes sense, okay? My, every time I go to my dad's post, even Cody could tell you that I always cower because my dad is always yelling at me. I believe that. And... Cody did tell me that. I believe that. I'm always having, I'm always afraid that he's going to do something to me. Okay, so what happened when you got there? He came out, did he come at you with a knife? Yeah. And then what did you do? <laughs> I kicked him in his balls and then he got pissed off me more and I wanted him on the floor and like he was just looking at me. And I looked at my dog like, come and help me, like he help. Where was Lucky at? He was cowering in the kitchen. Was he in a cage or? No, Lucky, okay. Lucky can't really hear all that well. My daughter stuck her fingers in her ears and, me, and now she's deaf. She's deaf? Yeah, because okay. my daughter kept shoving her fingers so, in her ears. And so stuff. Lucky won't get him you, so what'd you have to do? Oh, I remember that he came this way with the knife, put it away, because my daughter was. Say that again? He came at me like this. With a knife? Yeah, like, because I put it in the way. Like, he had this on pushed it this way, and then my daughter was coming this way, and that's all I remember is her, he pushing her away. But he had a knife in his hand? Yeah. Okay. And then, did you see blood on your daughter? I don't remember that. I don't remember that at okay. all. I so, what, how did you get your dad off you? I mean, how did it end? 
I don't remember that. Cheyenne, if you're saying it's self-defense, then I, I would like to know what what happened, okay? If you're saying he's attacking you, you can do whatever you need to do to save your life. That's okay. I need to know that because I don't believe you blacked out. I just, I remember that he had blood on me. You had blood on you? Yeah. I'm sorry? I had blood on me because I... Jessie is now trying to combine her blackout excuse with self-defense. If she had started with this, her father's death might have been more believable until forensics were done. Pushed it back towards him, and I don't know if it went into him, but I, I had blood on me. Okay. I don't know. Of course, your dog, is your dog, is she quiet now? Yeah. Uh, because, she, did she get stabbed? I think so, I don't know, I think. I mean, did you, you had, if she got stabbed, there had to be blood on her. But if he did it, then he did it, but. I don't know, I'm so scared. I know you're scared, but we need to find them. Shia, I just want you to tell me to Thought he changed? Yeah, he acted different with her. It's like he's trying to make amends for what he did to me. Like he's nice to her, but not you? Yeah. Okay. You don't want to spread your leg for that bastard. Say that again? You don't want to spread your leg for that bastard talking about your daddy. And I was just drunk and I didn't. Well, he said you spread your legs for the. Uh, for uh, her daddy. Her daddy. Okay. Uh, I was drunk, but we just had a miscarriage, and I gave it to a depression, and I just drank. I understand. I drank so, so much what, that what I happened? passed out, and then a couple months later, I found out I was pregnant with Meredith, and I dumped him because I got scared that he was going to hurt me too, that he was already slapping me around. And it was weird to have that. And then my daddy always me. Whenever I go to try to read, because I can't read because I, I, get, I can't read under pressure. I'm a very slow reader. Because my daddy never took the time to teach me. Yeah, I don't believe that, Cheyenne. I think you're telling some of the truth now. <laughs> What? Take your sip of your water real quick. I'll tell you that I love you. Just take deep breaths. I need my inhaler. Where's it at? But I need to go get a new one from the Walmart. Where's your inhaler at? Walmart, North Lakeland. No, where's your one out of No, I ran out. I, I don't spray no more. Okay. Do you have asthma? How long do you have asthma? Oh, my, I bet I grew out of it for a while. As long as I didn't run too fast. Have you ever tried to use privacy mist? <laughs> no. Hey, so what? After... Well, you're saying it's self defense. So I need but I need to know where you, where you put them. Are they under the house? No, they're in the shed of the landlady's house. I didn't know what to do. They're in the shed of the landlady's house? Are they in totes or what? Yes. Okay. How long were they in the house before you put them in totes? I don't remember that day that everything went blurry you know, and I'm freaking out. When you say, hey, I need to hear you. Okay, so I understand. Are they in totes, like storage totes? Yes. Oh, okay. And when, you, when did you put what, did you put them in there that same day? No, I freaked. I left. Just, I, I, I don't remember exactly what happened. Where at, where's your landlady shed at? On her property. Like, is it out back? Yes. Okay. Is it locked? Yes. Do you have a key to it? Yes. Where's the key at? Oh, me right now. Can I have it? Please? 
I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, I need to, first thing first is I need to get them out of there, okay? So I need you to give me the key. Jesse is reluctant to give them the keys, knowing that once they see the storage unit where she has her father and daughter, it will be over for her. Is it, is it in your jacket pocket? Did you get cut during this? No. Okay. Where's your key thing at? No, my belt. Can you get it off, please? Oh, I see them dangling there. Can you take this off, please, and show me which key it is? Are you worried about going to jail for self-defense, according to you, or are you worried about getting your daughter and your dad in the right place? Especially your daughter. That's what it is. It's somewhere in there. So I'm just trying to, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make you waste your money and stuff. I'm just scared. Waste my money? Waste state money or whatever. I ain't worried about money. We just, we're trying to find your daughter, okay? Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to fly. I'm just so scared. I don't know my daughter. Did you stab your daughter? No. Who stabbed your daughter? My daddy did. Who stabbed your dad? I didn't get protected. I was trying to get it. Did you, did you stab him in the neck? No, I stabbed him in the heart. You stabbed him in the heart? Where's the knife at? I don't know where I did with that one. Where did the knife come from? My pocket. Is this where you grabbed it from? He took the knife out of your pocket? Show me what the knife looks like. It looks like what I told you had. We have magic knives. Well, I don't know what. Is it a folding knife? Yes. How long is the blade on it? Like that blade. Okay. You stabbed him in the heart with that? Yeah. How did you get the knife away from him? I hit him in the head with the freaking thingy figure on the floor that he what? has. What? What thing? It's like, it's the thing that's underneath the, um, and they can't think of the name of it right now. I can't think of it. You, is it a piece of wood? Is it a yeah. piece of metal? It was a piece of wood. What is it? It was like, it, it kind of looks like the, like the, the ball that Meredith had. Like it's just a ball? Yeah. A ball of wood? Where did it come from? Like off a piece of furniture? Yeah. And where was that? I need you to look at me so I can understand you. Where was that at? She was playing with it like a ball. Who was? There it is. Okay. And my dad got mad at her for playing with it because apparently he was trying to fix something. This is when you were there? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you bashed him in the head with the ball? Yeah. Okay. What what part was this after he took the knife? Yeah, the knife and I stabbed him in the chest and said he killed her. You stabbed her down in the chest after you said you killed her? And then he said she's not talking to me. Where was she stabbed at? I didn't really look because I freaked out. But where'd you see the blood at? On the floor, all over the place. Where at? What room did this happen at? The living room. And then next thing you know, he grabs my gun that I had him. You grabbed your gun? <laughs> yeah. He After did. you stabbed him? Yeah, because he was still alive. She so, said, I'm going to kill you too, bitch. Where was, the, where was your gun at? It was underneath the couch. Your pistol? Yeah. But did he shoot you? No, I pulled it. I pushed it down and he fired it on his neck. He shot his neck? Yeah. Okay, so you stabbed him in the heart, then he, he sh you pushed the gun. Was he sitting down? No, he, laid on, he fell on the couch when I pushed him off of me. The couch or the love seat? The love seat part. I call it a couch. My mind he, was, he was on the love seat? Mm hmm How'd the blood get on the couch? That's where Harris fell. Okay. Um, did you put the sheets there? When did you put the sheets there? Was it later on? Yeah, no, I freaked out. I freaked out. I don't let you know what to do. No, I know you freaked out, but when did you put him on there? I don't know. 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 I don't know.
Cheyenne, you don't have to look at me if you don't want to, but I need you to uncover your hands so I can hear you. Okay? Can you please do that for me? You can keep looking down, but you got to move your hands. I can't hear you. I want to make sure I understand everything you're saying, okay? So, what what hand did your dad have the gun in? The left hand. Was he left-handed? I was having to reach underneath there to grab it with the left hand. And it was underneath the cushion or the couch? The couch itself. Or the love seat? He's on the left side of the couch right here. He's going to eat the couch. And then he's like, oh shit, that's where I put the gun. <laughs> While grasping at straws, Jessie seems to forget that they will be able to use forensics to determine whether or not her story is true. Did he pull it out? He pulled it out. Did he push them in? So, so he's sitting on the low seat, right? He's laying down on the low seat. It's, okay, so he's holding you, this are you standing up? I just have on my knees. Can you show me, um, can you show me, exactly, I'm going to lay on the floor, and you get on your knees. I need you, I need you to understand this, Cheyenne. Can you show me exactly what you did? I, I leaned over and I pulled it in, and I pushed it towards the bag when he fired. I can't hear you. I need you to move your arms, please. He's laying on the couch, right? Look at me. Cheyenne, he's laying on the couch, right? And you're right here on your knees? I'm on the, he's this way? Okay. So he's on the couch. Or on the, let's see, the couch is right here? But the couch is right here? Yes. So where are you at? Right here? Right here. Uh, the can, you leave, can you stand up? You don't have to get on your knees, but can you stand up exactly where you were? Oh, can you stand up, please? So he reaches, look, he reaches down underneath the couch and grabs the gun with his left hand. Okay. Does he point at you? No, I understand. Does he point at you? Tell me what the, you got to show. I need you to show me exactly what you did. This is very important. No, you need to get up. Can you get up, please? It's very important. Even the gun went on a different like, like that. And the, the gun went off here? Yes. Okay. Is that killing? Is that killing? No, he was pushing more like, like that and he then fired a couple more rounds. Because I was scared that he was going to try to kill me. But meanwhile, Meredith is on, laying on the couch. Yeah. Is she, is she dead, you think? I, mean, I, at that I, point? I don't, I didn't, I didn't hear anything from her. I don't know what happened. Was the knife still stuck in there? No. Because it was your dad's chest? Yeah. Is the is the knife still there? No. I got it. Let me ask you this. Does Cody have anything to do with this? No, he no. don't. Well, how did you get them over there by yourself? They didn't wear Well, how did you get them over there? Did you put them in the car? I put them in the suburban. Are they still in the suburban? No. How did you lift them up there by yourself? I slid them into the back when I got the truck up. So if... You ready to get tissue? Yeah. How did you get them up in the truck? In the suburban? No. We didn't know that was in there. Uh, when you when you had the suburban backed up to the house, did you, did anybody show up at the house that day? I don't remember. Okay, but how did you get them up into the suburban? You just I, picked them up? No, I just slid it. It slid. So you had the back doors open up to the porch or something? Yeah. And they slid right in? Yeah. But then how did you lift them out of the suburban into the uh, shed? I put Meredith down first, and I just slid Daddy down on top. He's on top of hers? Yes. Okay. I just got scared. I didn't know what to do. And I so Cody doesn't even know about this? No. Does his dad know about this? No, I don't want to. I'm not telling you. I'm going to tell him. 
But I just want to make sure they, they don't know about this. No, sir. Cody has nothing to do with this. No, sir. Well, what's up with the shovel that was in the that you took out of the bathtub? I was trying to clean up the blood, and I was freaking out, and I just I figured it. You were freaking out, and you were trying to clean up the blood. Yeah. And what was the shovel? What did you use that for? The shovel of the crap that they left there. What crap? When the body dies, it releases the feces and bring the water and stuff. Because it was a couple of days and I freaked out. But I left that day and then I went back. Because I, I didn't know what to do. I was reading so after life. you put them in, oh, you read that online? Is that what you said? Yeah. yeah. No, I didn't read it online. It's just something I see on criminal minds. Okay. But you actually saw that for real because they were dead. Jessie talks about how she tried to clean the scene, which may be the first true thing she has said during the entire interview. And did you do? Did you clean it up with that shovel after you put them in the containers? Yeah. Okay. And where did you put all that stuff at? In the containers with them? Or did you throw it out in the yard or under the house? I don't remember what I did exactly. I was just freaking out. Is anything out. under the house, like the knife? No, it was just blood. It dripped out through the floor because it was cracked in the floor. So what were you going over to the house for over there then? To try yeah. to bury the blood or something? I was just curious if anything was down there. And I did see animals, the animals. Were they right there? Yeah. I think you think he was eating that, that stuff? Yeah. And I, that disgusted me, and he already died. And it was just freak out. I, mean, I just freak out. I don't want to get hurt anymore. I didn't hear my daughter. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. Okay. <laughs> Do you recall what day this was? No, sir. Was it the day you dropped, dropped Meredith, or I'm sorry, Cheyenne? Was it the day you dropped Meredith off there, or was it another day? It was the day I dropped her off there. This all happened? This all happened in one day. If, what time? I don't remember. Was it in the morning or in the evening? It was dark. So it was dark out morning or dark out evening? Evening. Do you recall? I went back there to talk with him about her. He told me I better come back that he needed help with him. So. I didn't realize that he was going to attack me. I, I should have known that he was acting weird in the morning. I can't hear you. I should have known he was acting weird in the morning, but I didn't realize that he was... So that was on Saturday? Yeah. What day did you go back? On Monday. Monday. I went back and went Your dad's? 
Did you keep it with you, or did you leave it at the house? Well, I threw it in the suburban and, and deleted the messages. I didn't do that. I didn't know who just bring down. I just didn't know. I don't know. Is the furniture in the house now the same position it was before? Yes. Except for the table and the carpet. The table and the carpet wasn't there? They were moved out. Was the carpet there before? No, I think it was because I didn't want to look at it all anymore. Where was the carpet before? My bedroom. So is there a lot of, uh, is there, was there blood? On the floor, and you covered it with the carpet. Is that what happened? I, 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 I just, I, I, I don't know. I think I need to freak out. I don't know what they mean. I'm just tired of being hurt by him. And then he came at me with a knife. Her story is inconsistent with what the autopsy later discovered. Jesse's father had been shot in the head three times and stabbed in the back and neck multiple times. How, how did you get... And you said it was your knife? How, how did you get your knife out of your pocket? This hand so I keep my knife or my, anything in my pocket very well. If I sit down, it falls out. So where, where are you sitting now? Yes. Where were, you, where were you sitting? He knocked me on the floor. He knocked you on your floor? And the knife just popped out of your pocket? Yeah. And no, I know that he's on top of me, and I'm just fighting him, and then he's on top of me, and then he's on top of me, and just putting that away, and then Mary runs to try to protect me. She goes, I didn't try to protect me. I just never let her go to my daddy's house. Then he went to the step here for my dad. I can't hear you. She never let her go to my daddy's house and she didn't realize that there was something wrong and just took her. <laughs> it's been like, I'll just deal with her today. It's just you're upset about something and he does have cancer. He said, good thing that you, he said, you need to die. Yes, I'm what? already dying. He told you that? Yes. Did he have any intentions of actually leaving and going to Georgia? He talked about it, he really did. He just discussed it? Yes, when he told me about the place in Georgetown. And I freaked out and that's why I quit the day. You freaked out. What? Well, you know, put your hands down. I can't hear you. I just freaked out. I get scared. I don't know what to do. I need to protect myself because I don't. I don't always have to protect myself from him. He's always hurt me. Did, have you told anybody else what you've done? No. No? I'm just ashamed of myself for being gone with the pity myself. When you went back to the house, was there was there anything on the door or on the porch? There was a letter, a fake, a, a letter about that he that one of the landlady renters. Like uh, a check? Yeah, I, I told her uh, she asked me to deposit for her. Your dad told you to deposit it for her? Yeah. No, somebody told me to deposit the check for her. So, did you actually deposit that check? Yes, sir. Where'd you deposit it? The Wells Fargo, and Amy took me there because I don't know how to deposit checks. I've never done it before. Wells Fargo, where? In Plant City, downtown. And your friend Amy took you? Yes. And that's the one that was in the Marines? Yeah, and she doesn't know anything about this at all either. You didn't tell her? No, sir. So if we go talk to her, she's not going to say you mentioned anything or you ask her any questions? 
No, sir. She didn't have anything to do with this? No, sir. You sure? I'm positive. She, you just told her you need to go to the bank, and she took you to Wells Fargo? Yes, yeah, so and my dad's not here, and my landlady needs to just check deposits, and I don't want to deposit it. Was that before or after this happened? After. Do you remember what day? No. Did you continue talking to the landlady? Did you tell her anything about what happened? No. How'd you explain? Why would she ask you to deposit the check then? I told her that he's missing. She didn't ask you if you'd call law enforcement or anything like that? She asked me if I called family and stuff. And then she said, well, I need money so I can get down there. And I'm supposed to pick her up and pick her up from the airport. Did she actually, uh, did you ever actually call any family in Georgia? Yes, sir, I did. Who else you call? Jesse may very well have called family. Even with as many mistakes as she has made, she knows she would have to express some type of concern to someone. Um, everybody who's in my contacts that I've had working numbers for, mainly started with my aunt. I, I don't know, I just, it just turned into one big thing and I just, I didn't know how to stop it. I didn't, and it means you know, I just, I just freaked out, and I just can't live with it. But he attacked me, and I just can't live with him hurting me no more. So he attacked you with a knife, but he never cut you? No. So in, in the struggle over this knife, never cut your hands or your forearms or anything like that? He cut me on there. I don't see any cuts. It, Barely grazed my arm. And the cat scratched me over it. I healed quickly. But that right there was from the knife. So the day when you had the. Which vehicle did you use to, to move the totes? You said what The one that belongs to the landlady? Yes. You say you. Did you back it up? Did anybody show up that day? Anybody talk to you and ask you what you were doing? Um, they wondered who was here and Josh who, did. Who's they? Josh. What did Josh say to you? Okay, I didn't know who it was. I thought it was Eddie here. I didn't know it was me. Did he ask you what you were doing? I, I don't think he did. He talked about the, his baby, asked him how she was doing. He, told, he says, well, when your dad gets back in town, and he told me that the house is stinking. He told you that? Mm-hmm. said, yeah. Yeah, my dad's, my dad's house has already stopped. Did anybody else show up that day? Vicky showed up over at my lady's house. Vicky did? Yeah. Was the truck still at your dad's house? No. Where was it at at the time? I was told he said he could drive it up there so I could keep an eye on it. Uh, the I'm, not the truck, I meant the suburban. Oh, it was over there at the my lady's house. What did Vicky ask you? If I see my dad or heard from him. And I was I thought her no, and I don't know. I'm calling people. I just didn't know. I just freaked out. I don't, I didn't, I didn't know. I just freaked out. I'm just scared of that you're going to hurt me. And she wasn't talking to me.
takes a while for my mind to remember things and messed up. For being hit so much, so I'm slow sometimes. So if this was all done out of self-defense, why didn't why didn't you tell anybody? Why didn't you call, call the sheriff's office and let us know what happened? <laughs> So, what'd you do with your knife? I don't remember where I put it in. Do you remember what color it is? Not black. It's black? Mm-hmm. Is it a straight blade knife or like a razor knife? Or what kind of knife is it? I just I wanted to eat the punch out the windows for me out of a car wreck and cut seat bolts. Safety knife. When I'm safety, uh, break out the glass, cut seat boat, save your life kind of knife so you go into the water. Did you have it with you after you left the house that night? Every time they bring up an important piece of information, Jessie claims that she doesn't remember. At this point, any time she doesn't remember something is a good indication that they are close to the truth. I don't remember having it. You say you remember having blood on on you? Yeah. Where was the blood on you? On my shirt and from where he I turned it and just went on me from him being on top of me and when he punched me in the head right here. So you had blood on your shirt? What yeah. part? My breasts and my down to my pants. Was it any on your pants? Yeah, because I was in some on the floor. What did you do with those clothes? I got rid of them. Where where'd you get rid of them? I, I threw them in a bag and I don't remember where I threw that at. I threw it somewhere. But I can't find it at my dad's house, so I don't know where I threw it. Did you throw it at your house? I don't know. What about, did you throw it on the side of the road or did you throw it in the house, in the trash, the landlady's house? I, I honestly I don't remember. I don't. So that night when you left, did you wear those clothes away when you drove home? No. So when you went outside and you said you went outside and realized you had blood on you, right? Yeah. Then what'd you do? I grabbed his clothes and put them on. So you took your clothes off and put some of your father's clothes on? Yes. I freaked out. But you didn't take your clothes with you? I threw it in a bag. I don't know where I put it. Like a regular trash bag or a grocery bag or what? No, my bag. your gun? I threw it underneath the seat of my car. And Is it in your car now? No. Where's that now? It's at home. At your, the fifth wheel? Yeah. Where, where in the fifth wheel? Cody knows where it is. He doesn't know what happened to it. Where, where in the fifth wheel is it? I, I don't know what he said about it. What kind of gun do you have? I want a P-22. A P-22? Yeah. Is it semi-automatic? Yeah. You pull the trigger and it you with it. Did you, when you were going back to the house, you, you said you cleaned up, is that right? Yeah. Did you find any round shell casing? No, I didn't see any uh... Sharon, the day you were the day you asked um, Cody about will the body fit in the tote, did you buy that the day you bought the totes? No. When did you buy them? The next day or what? No, I, I, I he had my dad already had totes at the house. Oh, okay. So you were just asking him if you thought a body would fit in there? 
I don't remember exactly what I had. Okay. My days are longer than my wood numbers and I Okay. Forget about the day. Do you remember asking that? No, I don't remember. Okay. Do you do you remember asking him about how long it takes maggots to eat a body though, didn't you? Jessie tries to avoid answering the question, and when pushed, her voice is weak when she says she can't remember asking Monroe about maggots. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. The, gun, the gun that was under the couch, is that the gun that's in your trailer now? Yes. Okay. What kind of gun is it? So it's a .22. So it's a .22? Yes. Do you have a concealed weapons permit? Just asking. No, sir. I okay. was going to get one because I was scared for my life. A lot of times when I went over to my dad's house. Cody, Cody doesn't think that you're leaving the gun at your dad's house because you told him one time it was in the glove compartment. Is that true? That was when it was when we went to the shooting range. Okay, but I'm talking about like this last week. No. It was at your dad's house? <laughs> it... it Whenever they, before I left Meredith with him, I had it in the glove department, and then when Meredith came back, I didn't want it to be anywhere near me when I had her with me, so I left it with my dad. And you don't, you don't know where the knife is at right now? Did you throw in weeds or anything? I don't know what I did with it. Do you think it's still stuck in your dad's chest? Is that possible? Or did you take it out? I think I think it take it out. I don't think it's in his chest. I don't know. I didn't really look at him. <clears throat> I just freaked out. I just how how um was your daughter laying on the couch the whole time this happened? She was scared. Then she ran towards me. Uh, mommy. Did your knife have a clip on it? The knife that you had, mm -hmm. that's the one that you got from Cody. Cody went and bought a new one, right? Cody has two. Um, right, but he said the one that you were carrying was his, and he gave it to you, and then he went and got another one. Yeah. Okay, is that the knife? Yeah. Okay, does it have a clip on it? It clips in the pocket, yeah. Like it has, a, it has like, a, like, a, like a hook on it, like this cell phone thing does? Yeah. And how, what, how did your dad get it away from you? It slid out of my pocket when he, I fell to the ground because he hit me. It fell out of your pocket? When he attacked me, I fell down on the ground and it falls out to my pants. They fall out of my pants. Where did he fall? On the floor? Mm -hmm. And he picked it up? Yeah. And then tell me how your daughter got stabbed with it. She came at me and I pushed it and it went this way and she was running this way. And where did you hit her at? I think it hit her in the neck. I don't know. I didn't really look. I just, I, I, I blacked out for a minute, but I don't know. Because I'm the you, Cheyenne. I don't believe that story. I think you, I think you stabbed your daughter. No. Okay, you stabbed your daughter because you wanted to get rid of her to save your relationship. No, I didn't. And you also killed your dad on purpose. There was no self-defense there. No, I didn't. Yes. No. Yes, that's what happened. No, that ain't what happened. Because when you find your daughter, if her, knife, if her neck is sliced all the way open, she don't, you don't just run into a knife and that happens. So did you kill her because she was interrupting your relationship? No, sir, I did not. No, I did not. You did, dear. Your daddy did. You did. Oh, my dad did. My dad attacked me. What's the first thing he did? Push you down? Yes. And he yelled at me. How did you fall? Like, did he push you? How did he push you? Show me how he pushed you. Both hands? Yeah. Can you demonstrate that for me? So I understand? Because if you want me to believe that story, I want to see how it happened. So, I'm going to pretend I'm you, 
You don't have to really push me on the ground, please. All right. But he's over me. Any questions? When I come hard like that, I can, and you and fall I, back like this. Yeah, like trip up my boots and go down like this on the ground, and it slides out, and then he's over top of me, and then I'm, is he straddling you? Yeah. Okay. I kick him in the balls and the pieces of the ball. Where's Where's he sitting on your body? Right here in my abdomen. Okay, so how did you kick him in the balls? Like that, with the, this part of my fatty leg. That's impossible. And he's over me like this, grabbing the knife, trying to hold me down while he was doing it all. So when your brother got stabbed, he was sitting on you? Yeah. He was like <clears> this, <throat> and I grabbed this on, and he went like this, and then when he went like this, and he goes like this, I push her away, and he goes down like this, and hits me in the face. But when, at what point did you get your daughter get stabbed? Well, my dad went like this, and she was running towards him to try to get him off of me. What Jesse is describing would be a stressful experience fueled by adrenaline, and people often have fuzzy memories of those situations. Somehow, even with her supposed memory problems, she is able to walk them through it almost step by step. And that was in the floor in front of the couch of love seat. Right in between there. Or were your feet towards which direction? Your feet were towards the, the love seat. And your head was which direction? Towards the kitchen. And he's right on you. Yeah. And he's straddling you. He gets the knife. He's swinging around. How do you get it back? I'm not going to straddle you, but like say he had it in his left hand? He had it in this hand. Is he right handed? Yeah. Okay. So and then he's. And I go like this. That's like this. Like close like that. Where how he told me. Yeah. Okay. Where you punch like this to then, knock the guy out of the way. And push. Did you do that? Yeah. And then. So like, I, I don't know, I was like flaring my arms over. Just go slow, because I don't want you to really hit me. Oh, sorry. I'm just, I was... Dude, so, I'm swinging, just slow. And, and then... Because he went like this, I went like that, and then I went like this. Okay, so you pushed out of the way. Mm -hmm. Oh! And then, how'd you get the knife? The knife's still here. Yeah, and then I caught like that. That kind of hurt. Sorry. <laughs> And then I, like that, and then I, I learned how he, he opened the knife. Did you take karate? Like, where'd you learn this from? Um, Cody taught me self-defense to protect myself, okay. and I went to so MMA class. So you karate chopped him? Yeah. Chilling again? Don't really do it. Yeah, I went like that really hard. And then? And he, his wrists are sensitive, and then I got the knife out of his hand. And he's still straddling you? Yeah, and then he comes at me again, and I tell him like this. Tell me what I need to do, and come, like he yeah, comes yeah, in like yeah, this? Yeah, and then I go like this, and I... You went under there? Punch in the face. Okay. Your dad's a tough guy, right? Yeah. Where did he hit you at? Hit me right here. Let's see. Like right in no, there. Move your hand. Let's see the other side. Okay. Um, so and you stab him in the chest, and then how does he get on the couch? I push him, and then he, he gets up, and he's like, ah, and he falls back onto the couch. Okay. Meanwhile, your daughter's lying on the yeah, I look over. Well, he's a, he falls on love seat, right? Yeah, love seat. And your know. daughter's lying on the couch, like all the way on the couch. Well, is it like this, like holding the neck? Like, but is she all the way on the couch? No. So is her knees on the floor? Yes. Okay. And I only like married her. The next, you know, I look over. He's reaching like this, and he's there, trying to grab that gun. He has this like a this, and I push him, and he goes like this, and I pull out like that at the right. What did she do? I, I grabbed the gun and he went like this and fired. But where that, like right here? Right here. On his left neck? Yeah. Like right here? Well, I grabbed it and pushed it and... Okay, it went and, off? Yeah. Okay, so what and part? I, uh, what, go ahead. And I just like, I, I rigged out and then he, he goes, uh, and I just pulled it again and he just, like his fingers just stayed on the trigger. There wasn't that many bullets in the... In the so when you go... You took the gun, obviously, away from him, because you was at your house. So you took the gun at that mm -hmm. point? What'd you, where'd you put it? Like, in your pocket, or? I wrapped it up, and I covered it, and I... Wrapped it up with what? The um, banana that my daughter had. A banana? A banana peel? Banana. Oh, bandana, I'm sorry. And where's that bandana at? It's underneath my car. Underneath your car, like, outside? Under the seat. Your driver's seat? Mm -hmm. What color is the bandana? Red. Okay. And so, did you do that before? Um, and then you took the knife out of his chest? 
Yeah. And did you put that in your car too? No. I don't remember what I did with that. I don't okay. remember. At what at what point did you give first aid to your daughter? I went over there and then let you know when I grabbed her, her neck popped backwards. And what did you see? It was horrifying. She was blood coming out of everywhere. Well, where was the injury at? Can you point it on my neck? It was straight through the all the way back to the back. It's cut like this? No, it was like a stab oh, all the way through. It went through her neck? Yeah, through her jugular. Okay. So when you did that, was blood coming out? Yeah. And did you, like, try to cover it? Or yeah, I, I kind of covered it, and I'm like, Meredith, Meredith, and I felt the life go out of her. And I'm like, no, Meredith, please, Did Meredith. you have your cell phone with you? No. Did you, when your dad's cell phone was there? I did. Did you go to the neighbors and call 911? No, sir. Did I, you try to call 911? No, I freaked out. Cause, like, did you try to put pressure on her neck? Yeah, I freaked pressure on her neck with With what, like, just your hand? Or what? With my hand. Okay. Did you try to do CPR? Yeah. Well, how did you do CPR? Well, I hold her neck closed cause, and I pushed over her chest with my hand and it, nothing was working. I couldn't hold both at the same time. And, I couldn't get her to start leaching his blood. What clothes were you wearing? Jeans and a t-shirt. Where are those at? I don't know. I don't know what I did with them. You don't know what you did with the clothes? No, I don't. I don't know what I put them. I freaked out that day. Well, I'd imagine so. And I didn't know what to do. I just didn't know what to do. And... So where'd you take MMA class at? I went to one, a couple classes with my friend from Lowe's. Where at? In Point City. Where at the police department? No, uh, there's a little m a class in the little, there's like a little mall of thing where Alexander is. A mall? Like a little plaza. Like a little strip plaza? Yeah. Oh, now, what else is in the plaza? Uh, Beefo Briley's and Nail Salon and stuff. Beefo Brady's? Yeah. And Nail Salon? Yeah. And it, what's the MMA place called? Is it called MMA? Yeah. Training or something? Something MMA, I don't remember exactly. Okay. And how long did you go there? Just a couple sessions? Yeah. Okay. And then Cody taught you some moves? Yeah. How does he know those moves? His dad taught him that to protect himself. Or right. like but his dad went karate or MMA or something? He you knows uh, mixed martial arts. His dad does? Yeah. yeah. He's teaching when he was a kid. And I was just trying to defend myself. You said your dad was strong. And how, how tall is your dad? <clears throat> he's shorter than me. Is he not really strong? Uh, he's done a lot of lifting heavy weights and stuff, like motors and stuff all of his life. And so he's strong as an ox? He's strong, but I, I remember the pressure points that he told me to hit if someone was attacking me. Who, who told you that? My daddy did. He taught me so that. So what pressure part. points did you hit? Right here. You did that to your dad? Yeah. Oh, because you didn't show me that. You no, not like this. Oh, but I thought you hit him in the chin. You hit him the pressure point here? Yeah. Right here. There's a pressure point there? What's it called? I don't remember what it's called. Right in the throat? Yeah. Like... What other pressure point? I remember he told me to hit in the nose. And that's the not head. a pressure point. That's, that's just hitting somebody. That there's a thing right here on the neck, or there's a pressure point on your arms and stuff. I don't remember. Did you do all those pressure points? I did. I hit everything. I was hitting everything with his body to try to to get him. This I'm still the only thing I'm, I don't know how it happened is if he's sitting on this part of your body, sitting. How do you kick him in the balls? You can kick him in the butt. This part of my body. Right, but how still, how do you kick him in the balls? He how? leaned over. Huh? He leaned over me and trying to hold like it he down. Like he was off, he was knees were on the he was off you? Yeah. And you, how's your knee in the balls? I went, like that. Did that get him off? No, I made him sit more. <laughs> and then he got pissed and he said, you know, just like, just throw my arms anywhere I can and and so he's reaching in a knife and everything, and everything's just like going all crazy. How far was the knife from you? Like, just right here. Okay. It's laid out, like, right here. Why do you think he was trying to kill you? I, I don't know. What provoked him to just start beating you up? 
Well, how, tell me what happened that started that. I told her that I'm not letting her home. I'm just trying to get her help. and that. Not only do her movements not match up consistently, but if her father taught her fighting moves, it is more likely he would be able to counteract them as well as have the size and weight advantage. The intensity of the fight doesn't make sense. Why would he go into a murderous rage if he was supposedly looking forward to spending time with Meredith, regardless of why Jesse was leaving her? I said, you're just being an asshole. And then next thing you know, he said, you know what, I'm fucking tired of your shit. I'm fucking tired of everything in this fucking house. I'm fixing to die anyways and you don't give a damn. I was like, I do give a damn. He goes, no, you're just too busy with your life. No, I'm not too busy with my life. I got to work. I got to support my child. I got to be able to pay the bills and stuff like you told me you can do as an adult. And they said, fuck you. And that's, and that's all I remember. Him saying is, ah, I'm Hey, well, what we do know is that one question I have is there's a, uh, in the couch and bus seat, there's like slash marks there and pun punctual holes. How'd that happen? Because it was a basically pristine couch and bus seat. How'd that happen? I just cut it, break a little like dog wood on there. Uh, I don't know, I just, I, I didn't want to look at the couch anymore, so I, after they were gone at the house, I started stabbing the couches, because I, I was pissed off, but he tried to hurt me, and I just... With what knife? I mean, just a little kitchen knife that's in the kitchen right now. Where's it at in the kitchen? It's by the sink. That's where I left it. Is it in a butcher block? Is no. It in What's it look like? It's just little. Is it a steak knife? Yeah. How thin is it? How, how wide is the blade? Not that wide. It's just like. Well, because the, the blade that the slash marks in there are bigger than that. So. Yeah, I like that. It was it. Like you pulled it? Yeah. It wasn't the same knife? No, sir. I think they were stabbed on the couch. No, sir. I think that you, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't believe your story. I think that you wanted to get rid of your daughter. No, sir. I did not want to get rid of my to daughter. My to save your relationship. To save your relationship. Because you never told us anything about your dad being aggressive towards you until uh, you said you killed him. Right? I'm done. Huh? My dad was aggressive to me. He's been aggressive to me a lot. Good. But he's that's not what happened. Months. You murdered your daughter. No, I didn't. He yes, was on did. top of me and I stabbed her because I was trying to get away from him. That story doesn't even make any sense. He came out. The me. way you made it sound, Cheyenne, to be honest with you, that you're like a karate master. Shine, here's the issue. If this man, that grown man, he's strong, because you say he lifts motors and stuff, he's on top of you and he's wielding a knife, you're not taking it from him. You're going to have some cuts on him. There's no way with a couple martial, mixed martial arts classes that you took it away. So put your hands down for me for a second. There's no way that happened. Yes, it did. It did. Listen, you're, you're telling me a grown man was on you, punched you in the face with a knife, and you got no cuts, no lacerations, no marks. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. There's no way that happened. What does it do? There's no way. No way with just a couple classes you know how to de-arm someone with a knife and then not be able to cut you. 
So how did it really play out? Why were you angry? I'm sure he was he was being rude with you or saying stuff to you or being mean to you. But I don't believe he got on top of you with a knife. I don't believe that happened. Yes, he did. The evidence suggests otherwise. But that's what happened. It really happened. Listen, I've seen training videos. I've been a part of training where people wield knives. If somebody's wielding a knife, you're going to have defensive wounds if you're trying to protect yourself. You have nothing. You have no marks, which would indicate you were defending yourself to me. Just when Jesse thought she had figured out a way to explain her actions, the detectives let her know that they don't believe this story either. So that, listen, there's no way. There's, no, there's just no way. Not from a man that can lift, like you said, motors. He doesn't lift motors anymore, the man he does. Kind of, but listen, you said he's a strong man. And he punched you in the face. And he had a knife. He was attacking you with it. But you don't have any knife attack marks. You don't have any marks. Nobody's indicated they saw you that week. You saw Vicky. You saw was Josh, the one that lives on the property. You saw Cody. You saw Cody's family. Nobody's indicated you ever had any marks. She complained. Or you had bruises on your face, or your forearms, or your hands. Nobody said that. So the evidence suggests that that's not true. That's what happened. That's what happened. That's what I honestly thought happened. This is the real Yes, it did. Yes, it did. No, yes, it did. It doesn't make sense. What show did you say you guys watch all the time? Criminal Minds and CSI and all that. So Criminal Minds and CSI and all that stuff you watch. Does yeah, it make like, sense to you that this would happen? Somebody have a knife on top of somebody else and they'd have no defensive wounds on their forearms or hands? I know karate a little bit from watching all the TV. And I hear you know, one says that. It didn't happen. Yes, it you don't, did. You don't, you don't watch karate movies and all of a sudden become a karate expert. No, I, I know what I know. That's what I did. My arms were flaring around. So how, how many stab wounds did your dagger have? I don't remember. I just remember I got it wrong. And... Listen. He didn't take your knife from your pocket. Yeah, he did. He didn't have a knife. He went on top of you. Yes, he did. I don't deny. Not trying to hurt you with it. Yes, he did. So, when you're telling the truth, you act completely different than when you're not. I'm telling you the truth. When you're not. You're absolutely not. I'm telling you what I know. How can that happen? You said that there was, <clears throat> you said that the, uh, the coffee table was there. How does all that happen? You didn't fall on the coffee table. And there's no way that Meredith could have ran all the way up to you guys if, if you're on the other side of the coffee table. So there's no way it could have happened. You can't lay on the floor and her run across the room with a coffee table in the middle of that room. 
There's no way. Coffee table's not broke. As if you fell on it. So tell me what happened. Because that didn't happen. That's what happened. Meredith. Or Cheyenne. Look at me. Look at me. It's not what happened. Cheyenne. Look up. Let's get to the bottom. That's what happened. It just couldn't have happened. That's why I blacked out about it and then didn't Could, come back. Couldn't have happened. Couldn't have happened that way. So tell me how it really happened. That's how it happened. You attacked me and I'm defending myself. I'm not saying you didn't attack you. I'm not saying you didn't defend yourself. I'm saying he didn't push you on the ground. Yeah. He didn't get on top of you and take your knife. And try to slash you with it. And you didn't do any karate moves to take it away from him. Because if you'd have done that, the odds of you not having any marks on you at all, especially when you say punch you in the face. The lack of wounds on Jesse has a second meaning. Her father didn't even have a chance to fight back. I wanted to remind you once again, my new merch shop is up. StrangerLabel.com is full of relatable designs like the unstable and the mentally checked out t-shirts, as well as other cool items like the all-seeing beanie and the stranger socks. Every purchase helps support this channel, and you can even write me a short message on the purchase page. I'll be reading every single message that comes with any order, big or small. So head to StrangerLabel.com and get whatever you want. And with that said, let's get back into the case. There's no way that happened. You've talked to too many people this week. Vicky and Josh and Cody and Cody's family. All these people. And you've gone to work. Nobody's reported you have any injuries. Or bruises like you get punched in the face. So what really happened? Attacked me, pushed me down, and then on top of me. He got on top of me, and he hit me here. He hit me here. And then I kept going. I, I did what I can, flare my legs around, trying to get out from. Underneath him. But he never had the knife. He had the knife in his hand. He grabbed the knife. He didn't have the knife. Yeah, he grabbed the knife. He did. He grabbed the knife. He might have grabbed it after you, after you stabbed him. No, I didn't stab him first. He grabbed the knife. China. Tell me the truth and tell me how this happened because listen, there's no way you fell in the middle of the floor because there's a coffee table there. Okay? That's number one. Number two, if he's sitting on you, you can't kick him the way you said you kicked him. All right? Number three, if there's a coffee table in the, in the middle of the floor, there's no way that Meredith ran over to you guys the way you said she did. There's no way those things happen. The way that living room set up, and you said it was set up the same way that day, other than the carpet. There's no way it happened. And you said your feet were towards the love seat, and your head was away. That's the same way that the coffee table's wrong. Yeah, she was over the coffee table. So she come run and jumped over the coffee table. Yeah. No. No. She can't run and say, mommy, mommy. So she come run and jumped on the coffee table, and jumped over the coffee table. We were like right next to it, like going at each other's, trying to, I'm trying to protect Listen, myself. Tell me how it really happened, because this didn't happen. That's what I remember. You, you said, me. Listen, look at me, Mary, or Cheyenne. You said she put, he punched you on, on this side of your face, and now you're saying he punched you on that side. And then you said he had a knife. Which hand do you have the knife in if he's punching you on both sides of the head? He hit me this one first, and he hit me this one. Okay. If he's, he so, so if he's punching you on both sides of the head, where's the knife? He hurt me on this. 
bigger than you and they're on top of you didn't happen he's, you just said he's punching you on both sides of the head how could he have it on this side my head on this way as he reached down no if you're getting punched in the head how do you know what he did there's you got too many details of you exactly knowing exactly how everything's happening when you're getting punched in the head on both sides with two fists even though the detective walks her through the reasons why her story can't be true, Jessie will not budge. She is not going to take responsibility for the murders. Clearly of which he didn't have knives. And punch with such force that you didn't have any marks. Set up. Okay. Look at him. Look at him. How did it really happen? No matter how many times you tell me that, it's still not true. That's why I was saying that he, he was punching me and I seen the knife in his hand. I don't know if you... He didn't, he didn't stab. Where? That ain't how it happened. It didn't happen that way. So tell me how it really happened, how this incident really happened. He's attacking me. Standing up or sitting down or on the floor? He was first standing up and he pushes me down to the ground. And then, and right. then, he, then he's on top no, of me. No, no. That's where you lose him. No. I kicked at him. Standing up or on the ground? On the ground, I kicked at him. But he never got down on top of you? Yeah, he did. He did. No. He got down on top of me and he's on top of me. And then he hit me. I remember I felt it in the head. I felt it in my head. I felt it in my head right here. And I had headaches all week since then. Just protecting yourself. Because Meredith, Meredith didn't do anything to you, and there's and he didn't stab her. No. Based on the base. He to him just like guys. He he didn't do it. There's no way this happened the way you're saying. The way the living room's laid out and all the evidence. Tell me the truth. across the room, jump over a table, and come flying at you guys. It didn't happen.
remember saying, Mommy, 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 Grandpa's coming. Grandpa's coming. Go with the Grandpa. Grandpa, stop running, Mommy. Grandpa, stop running, Mommy. I'm hurt. I'm sick. Telling me the truth, you you were genuinely upset. And you cried. You you don't have any tears in you. Just because it's a lie. It's a lie. Yes. No. no. We're back to square one. When you when you were lying to me earlier. No. This isn't the truth. Jessie would probably prefer this to be the truth rather than having to face the reality that she chose to kill her father and daughter for her own selfish reasons. There is fear there. I can't take this no more. I can't take it no more. I can't take this no more. I can't take this no more. In July 2019, a jury recommended the death sentence for the murder of Meredith, while they vetoed 10 to 2 for a life sentence for Weekly's murder. In 2021, Jesse was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The court bailiff, who was standing close to Jesse as she was being sentenced, later said Jesse was trying to tell the judge she did not commit the murders. And that's where we end this video. If you liked today's video, then drop a line. And if you want to support the channel even further, you can check out my Patreon link in the description below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.